Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games, and today we're going to be playing some Jaguar Ooh. games, specifically, stay up there, oh Bernie, hold there, Bernie can help hold, there we go, specifically games <laughs> that are going to be using the rotary controller, Wait, party oh. time for kittens, cats, Cats. Cats cats cats, 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 cats. It's time to get the it's cats a, cat nip. a little high before yes. the show Ooh, starts. More cat nip. Oh, we were just at the cat store yeah. looking at cats. Yes. Oh my goodness. I almost came home with 20. That's too many. It is too many. Oh, like geez. when you have the same amount of cats as people, I think. It starts to go that's, crazy. That's about right. That's about right. Yeah, if yeah, it I goes over you. the number of people, <laughs> then they start to outnumber you and cats are trouble already. Oh, kidding. <laughs> Um, so we're going to be playing, um, uh, well, pl looking at five, <laughs> playing four, um, Jaguar, oh my god. Uh, he's lost it already. He has Stole lost it. Stole it out of Atari's mouth, too. He has really taken the catnip in the past, like, six months. Oh, can you have some, too? He says, no, it's mine. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be playing Arkanoid 2, Impulse X, Project W, which is Warlords. Uh, virtual experiences Pong or VX Pong uh, and Kaboom on the Jaguar. Nice. Okay. Um, and we're also going to be um, taking a look at some statements from homebrew developers okay. whose games have been removed from the Atari Age store. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Cause I reached out to them okay. uh, recently after the announcement was made. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see what, the reactions, the statements, and the future uh, for their homebrew games that are released and going to be released. Do you want to go over again what the, what the statement was if for people in the audience who might not have heard yet, although I kind of yep. doubt they haven't? Yep, but... yep. I'll, I'll go over it again. Okay. Um, but first, I want to thank the Twitch subscribers, uh, scrolling down beside Tanya. Ooh, yes. Al the Firearms Guard Code, or Atari 974. Oh, yeah, I need to flip oh. it. Cats. There's no... There we go! <laughs> Except from cats. I know the cats are cool, but... <laughs> uh, Alan Farr, Arms, Arms Guard Coder, Atari 1974, Atari, Atari's Maximus, Beef Supreme, BR Pokemon, Buffalo Bill, Pinball, Buffalo Pinball, oh. uh, Chelsea Donnie, Mao, Charles Whelan, Chitlala, Colonel Lama, Dan of EC, Daryl 1970, Drexel, Dr. Moo Cows, Gamma Dev, Glenn Main, Great Defender, Gretams, Gojo Rapper, Johnny WC, Kavito, Kavito Genzo, uh, Carl G. Ken Jennings, Invader, uh, Kev Kelly, Devel, Kevelter, Lambda Express, Lundy DZ, Mark Yannis, Mark Spacing, Melatari, Mick Muse, Mike Soul, Michael Town, Miss Command, MK Smith, M Mother 3, Mr. Zarno, Wood, Mr. Fix, Maudie Funster, Nathan Strum, Neomina, Nostalgic 26, Pat Rap, VG, Coog, Raymond C, RC70, Render Ghost, Friendless VG, Six Sweet. <gasps> Finally. You signed up. <laughs> Uh, Sledgehammered, <laughs> Smitty B, Spicer, S, Ramirez, D, Train, T, Dan, K, Trek, MD, VV, Jobble Down. And if you'd like to support the show and subscribe, you can. It's free mm -hmm. with Amazon Prime. You link it up and... You get a free a, subscription every a month. A little bit to Jeff Bezos and yeah. a little bit to the cats. <laughs> there you go. Um, Keep just them in the like, catnip. Just, yeah, that's right. Keep Thank you again, cat. Gamma Dev. <laughs> just like Spiceware did, Raymond C., Dan ABC, the D Train, and Al Nefer oh, did wow. just before the thank show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And the cats, thank you. They're high now. Yes. And all happy. And there's catnip all over the floor. Oh my God. And all over the cats, yeah. specifically Sprite. <laughs> They're both licking catnip off themselves. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we went to VRGE. Yes. Uh, on Saturday. Yes pretty good yep. i wasn't particularly looking for yeah I anything think... two items one i found but it was in the box and it was like crazy expensive so mm. i didn't want that mm -hmm. i'm not really for boxed items because they're not display pieces they're use pieces yeah so you don't really need the box you don't need the extra cost no and we don't have the room for it anyway yeah. Um, but I did pick up one thing I was looking for, which is the Super Advantage by ASCII Wear, um, which is a SNES controller, but an arcade style joystick and buttons all on the front there. And as a bonus, it has, you know, a turbo button settable, uh, but even has a slow down button. Um, got a really good deal for it. Uh, which I'm really happy. Uh, it was a little dirty. I cleaned it, tested it out. Works great. Yep. And I got this because of the SNES2 Atari adapter that is used in Attack of the Petsky ah, Robots. Ah. 
and hopefully many more games. Nice. So I can do it with uh, a proper yeah. uh, joystick. Mm -hmm. I like joysticks better than game like D-pads, so that's why yeah. I bought this. It depends on the game, but I it think, does I depend think a Attack lot of, of uh, the Pets Petsky Robots will be good with those buttons. So, yeah. Yes, it will be. I think it'll be think a it'll little be bit easier. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, and what did you get there? Oh, well, I didn't... There wasn't too much I was looking for, but I did find... I always love looking at all the products the the cutesy things that people create yeah there's stained glass yeah there's those plastic um, bead things plushies and stuff plushies, and knitted things jewelry and earrings yeah yeah all kinds of stuff and then someone had a booth and they were selling VR, a bunch of vrge VRG. vancouver retro game yes. nobody, nobody panic <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's not till october so VRG. um yeah they were selling fans and i was like oh it's so cute and it's got a bunch of I don't know if you can see a yeah. bunch of controllers yeah. and little game themed, you know, icons on it. Yeah. And I Generic. thought since this room gets really hot, this is perfect. Just fan myself while uh yes. while you play. <laughs> <laughs> so or you while I play. So you don't faint. It's a one handed game. Yeah. Yeah. So Yeah. Good. That's really what Coffee. I got. There was we looked around quite a bit, but we didn't stick around too much this time. And there wasn't no. a lot we were you were looking for. I was looking no. for so looking for it was good, um, a smoke gray, you know N the transparent N sixty four. Yes, not a high priority N sixty four era <laughs> first gen three D systems. Not my cup of tea. Mm. Um, but there's a couple games on there, and I would just mod it for RGB. And uh, so there's some really good first party games like uh, uh, the Mario game and, and some other ones as well. Smoke gray should not be difficult to find right now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Lots of smoke in the air. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just automatically smoke gray. Everything's I think they look gray. really cool. I like them too. Um, yeah. Because there's like a purple one, a green one, a blue, I think. Blue is as there well. Blue? Or is yes. it a green blue? I can't remember. No, there's definitely an aqua one. Aqua. Aqua, okay. Yeah, really nice. Uh, they are really nice. You need a mint julep to go with your fan, I D train know, says. I know. It's a, I, well, <laughs> what do you I'm, have? It's like a Paloma. It's a canned cocktail, but uh, um, <laughs> but good. that's quite nice too. Not quite a mint julep, but. Yep. Uh, <laughs> mm. Oh, rock concerts have clean air machines now for contrast. <laughs> clean air machines instead of uh, smoke going everywhere. It's clean I, air. I, it's still to this day, like, I oh. always attribute, like, bars with the smell of smoke like oh, yeah. just from the 80s and 90s and yeah, yeah. i don't know D D vvg double down has three pikachu edition n64s nice why not four I, well, that's three? the question why not just three <laughs> <laughs> um no. so um last episode we had john champo on mm. to talk about the news that a number of games are being removed from the Atari Age mm. Store. 92 games, 92, 92 titles. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you okay. weren't here for that. Um, I didn't know how many. I knew that 92. you had mentioned in passing. That um, that they're that was all happening. ports. Yeah. Um, they're related to IPs that belong to other companies. Mm -hmm. um, 92 is quite a lot. So I thought, and John thought it would be good to come on the show mm -hmm. and talk about it from his perspective, um, what he's going to be doing with his titles yes, and his games yes. and how it impacts him and how he felt about the whole news that, uh, that Al released. And uh, there's a sale in the Atari Age store right now. It's 10% off those titles that are going away. Oh. They're going away on July 23rd. Oh, there's a bit of time then if people bit want of to time. them up. Yeah. And they're on sale. Um, and they're in the store until they run out. Um, I think that only applies to boxes because he can make these games on the fly most of them unless there's something special not the manuals so yeah mm. the manuals will run out and then they'll run out so okay so if you want them i highly suggest buying them now yeah because it's literally the last time you'll be able to get them mm. in this form at least with yeah some of them might be coming out in, in, in other form other places time will tell yeah but they may not so i would seriously consider um, checking out the 92 titles. Yeah, yeah like Charles Williams says, too many to buy. Yeah. Um, D Train, you can just watch it on YouTube. Um, John's episode, it's already on YouTube, so you yeah. can uh, check that out. Um, and then I thought uh, for this episode, 
I think people would want to hear some other developers as well. Their comments on it. Their comments, yep. their plans. So I reached out to a number, not all of them, because there's quite a few. Um, uh, reached out to a number of developers um, to see what they had to say about how it impacted them. Mm -hmm. um, so the statements that I have are from eight different developers. Wow. Um, John Champo wrote up something uh, to make it more succinct because you can listen to us talk about it on the last yeah. show. But um, and I'll post these after the show in okay. um, social media and stuff so people can read them themselves. Um, so the developers I have statements from are John Champo, uh, Sylvia Mo uh, Silvio Mogno, uh, Chris Walton, Carlos Centeno, uh, Daryl Ganther, uh, Daryl Spice Jr. Bob De uh, De Crescenzo. I listened to him pronounce his name the other day. <laughs> De Crescenzo, not De Crescenzo. Um, and uh, Lewis Hill, Muddy Funster. Yeah. Um, so I also reached out to uh, Chris Spry. Okay. Uh, Sprybug, whose game Zippy the Porcupine is being removed from the store. Okay. Um, but he wasn't able to respond in time. Okay. Um, for the broadcast, so maybe he'll follow he'll it up get something or, later, or yeah. post it in the forums or something like that. Okay. Okay. And I was actually really looking forward to his response mm. because he's been through it. He had Princess Rescue oh. removed from the store. Yes. As a result, possibly of a cease and desist. I don't think it ever was 100% confirmed. Yeah. But it was immediately removed from the store. So I, I was guessing it was a cease and desist. Uh, we want to say de decrescenzo because of decrement in structure. I almost said that, but that is why yeah. we want to say that. So I have to remember that it's the opposite of that. <laughs> Batman plus lol. Um, yeah, so he had Princess Rescue because of the big N. Um, mm. Probably did a cease and desist on it. Mm. And of course, now they're really expensive. And it's a really good game, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, so there's a handful of them out there, and they get posted on eBay once in a while, and they go for hundreds of dollars. So options that I've seen proposed online and other places for what developers can do moving forward, and, and we discussed this a bit with, with John in the last episode, were self-distribution of their games on cartridge or binary um, with the possibility of having Atari Age doing the manufacturing of the cards, but just not the distribution or putting their names on it or anything like that. Um, seeking licensing from the IP holders of the games. Okay. Um, Deanoid has done that okay. with Load Runner. Yeah. And also Boulder Dash, uh, Thomas Yench and Andrew Davey did that with the new Boulder Dash and the previous to Boulder Dash as well. Um, removing the infringing names, graphics, music, and re-releasing their game. Yeah. Hard with a port though, because a lot of it is yeah. associated, right? That's that's the thing. You want to make yeah. the port to make it like the arcade. It's one thing to but have... then you have to get rid of everything that makes it the, the arcade. The ports, game. yeah. Because you actually have to change the level design too. Well, yeah, and that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Is it a port at that point? It's almost a game. It's that's a tribute inspired by the. It's original. almost like a, a sequel, uh, but uh, not really because not you really. can't even make the characters look the, like the characters. Yeah. That's um, tough. Another option is moving away from ports and developing original games. Yeah. Some people want some to, people, some people don't, right? Exactly. Yeah. Some people are like, I just like making ports. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, yeah. The eBay scalping has already begun. Well, yeah. hopefully not yet. Somebody's losing money. They can go to the Atari age store. <laughs> so. um, another option is reaching out to Atari, other Atari game distributors. Mm. There are other options. Atari age is quality is top notch. Yeah. So I, that may not be something they want to do and take their chances with other distributors mm -hmm. of varying qualities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so let's take a look at some of the statements mm -hmm. or all the statements because these, <laughs> these, I reached out to these developers and, and asked them, so what was your reaction to this and what are you going to do with your games moving forward? Mm -hmm. Are you like, are you going to sell them yourself? Like all the options. I, I actually listed those out to, to say, hey, ideas these, or, yeah. these are options. Have you thought about these? Yeah. Um, so let's, uh, yeah, let's take a look. One second. Let me bring up. Um, so the first one is uh, from uh, John Champo, 
and it's it's uh, kind of a, a summary of what we talked about on the last show. Um, so he says, as for Champ Games' reaction, we're disappointed, of course, but knew this could happen at some point and totally understand and support Atari Age's wishes to move in a different direction by producing only licensed and original games. If Champ Games can uh, secure licensing, licensing for any older titles or future ports, we will work with Al to see if they can be added back to the Atari Age store, because that's always a possibility. Um, we are also actively developing original games that we hope to have released next year, mm -hmm. um, which is their um, Champ Games, Champ Sports Hockey, okay. Champ Sports Baseball. Nice. And he does have screenshots up on the Champ Games page that you can take a look at. They look amazing. Um, we plan to complete Turbo Arcade and mm -hmm. Elevator Action, which we played last episode, Turbo Arcade, and we'll play Elevator Action in a future mm -hmm. show, uh, with Champ Games Publisher branding. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna be releasing it themselves. Fair enough. Um, produce 50 carts of each for PRGE. Nice. So fairly limited. Buy them at PRG, is <laughs> get, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, get your friend to buy them at PRG. Yeah. <laughs> Al and Fred have both offered to assist um, Champ Games, I'm like, CG. Yeah, <laughs> Champ Games. <laughs> uh, in this transition. Mm -hmm. um, he also said that he'll be having a booth, it's not listed here, at okay. PRGE. Okay. Uh, which would be super cool. Yeah. Um, he's got tons of titles to sell, so. Yeah. Uh, ROMs will still be on sale in our store, and we will add... Uh, Turbo Arcade and Elevator Action ROMs sometime after PRGE. Mm. We are currently researching alternate publishing options, including self-publishing with physical games to be added to our store if we decide to move forward. This will include any new games, but may also include old games rebranded at some point. Mm. That's another issue. A lot, of the, a lot of the newer ones at least had Atari Age come up on the screen. Okay. So you're gonna have to reprogram their games. And mm. also, all the boxes and manuals say Atari Age on them, so they're going to have to be completely redone. That, but Atari Age yeah. is selling them right now to deplete those yes, stocks. Yes, that's fair. Yeah. So that's not really an issue that they'd still have some left over. Um, we'd like to thank Al uh, for all the time and effort he's put into publishing Champ Games over the last 17 plus mm. years, and thank the community for all their kind words of support. It is much appreciated. Mm. So it looks like he's going to be fine with Champ Games. They're going to keep going. Um, the only issue, uh, the only concern with them is they don't know right now what they're going to do with physical. Yes. But binaries. That's more complex. Yeah, yeah, more complex, more work. The ROMs and all that. Are the ROMs, he's already got his store yeah. set up. It's been going for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the next. Oh, is that on focus? Next person we're going to take a look at, Sylvia yeah. Mogno. Mm -hmm. um, very bad news for all of us. I was thinking what to do, and I concluded that licensing a very strong trademark like Qbert is near impossible mm. uh, for this very tiny business. Uh, so he made um, a port, the port of Qbert. Uh, on the other hand, it is very hard to change my game to not being recognizable as Qbert. We're mm. discussing that. It's like, how do you change it enough? So it's not Qbert, but still be fun and recognizable yeah. for people as Qbert. Yeah. Is it possible to do that? To do so, I would have to change completely the game and it would take a huge amount of work mm -hmm. and it could be no more fun like now. Yeah. And that's that's the issue too. Like people with huge catalogs, they have to go back and change all their work, mm -hmm. figure out their source code, yeah. go f wrap their head around it again and go... Uh, and, and reprogram their games is, is that and, and I can see a lot possible? of people just not wanting to do that you know no. you know you have to be motivated to to do that much you know make that many changes and it's a huge amount time, of work right? especially with people so, with huge catalogs yeah Carl G says now hear me out triangle Bert <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is a pyramid a yeah. triangle yeah. yeah there you go um how about triangle Ernie triangle Ernie oh <laughs> interesting yes uh I was also thinking to release for uh, free source code and final ROMs, but it could be very disrespectful, disrespect, disrespectful to ones that paid $50 mm. for my game. That's another mm. concern as well. 
uh, in the future, I'll have time. If I'll have time, I'd like to make another classic game because I think near all ideas in classic video games were explored, mm -hmm. and all I can do is take an existing game and port it on the VCS or make it better by adding new features. Sadly, I don't have enough fantasy to think a brand new game concept. Thanks for writing to me and hold on. Mm. Um, yeah, and that's a sentiment a number of developers have said. I, I'm a programmer. Yeah. Not a developer. John said that on the sh on the show last yeah. time. Conceptually, you're not so interested in, yeah. you know, con conceptualizing that something new, but in developing it, right? Yeah. It's like the difference between the writer and the producer of a film. Yeah. You know, the you writer both want to make a film. The writer <laughs> loves the create creative aspects of it, but they they're not necessarily interested in in how to put it all together, right? So you yes. need. Those are two completely different skill sets. Very different skill yeah. sets. Some some people do both. Um, there are some, but it usually is a very clean divide. Yeah. In at least 2600 um, developing, it's like you're either original, VHZC, 100% original, pretty sure. Yeah. Um, and somebody like Champ Games, 100% ports as of right now. So this huge, like, clean divide usually most yeah. of the time. Some do both, though. Um, Chris Walton, CD-W. Uh -huh. In many ways, I'm surprised that it did not happen sooner. Mm. I think this is an inevitable consequence of the increase in popularity of retro gaming, meaning companies are rediscovering and asserting IP rights for titles they had previously forgotten mm -hmm. or abandoned as worthless. However, now it has finally happened and is still very painful for our community. There's some irony that game developers in the day freely borrowed ideas and concepts from one another. For example, uh, considering how many Pac-Man and Spaceman uh, invaders, Space invaders, Space yeah. invaders variants exist. However, uh, times and laws have changed, and game-related IP is now carefully guarded and enforced, which unfortunately includes the golden era games we enjoy so much. It would be nice if the IP holders would give us a free pass, given that they never port to the 2600, and the games are sold essentially for cost. Like, mm. pretty, pretty much. But my wife is a lawyer and has informed me that IP just doesn't work like that, especially trademarks. Mm -hmm. um, the effect on me personally is limited as two titles impacted, Juno First and Star Castle mm -hmm. Arcade, have been in the store for nearly 10 years and I'm fine to let them go. Albert has said that Boom is still good for release as there are hundreds of bomber style games okay. out there. And so only Xevious is impacted. Mm. However, I'm devastated at the... Uh, at the effect that this will have on John, Bob, Thomas, Daryl, Nathan, and others who have put in so much effort. Mm -hmm. I'm also concerned that this will end up destroying the already tiny community of Atari Homebrew developers and therefore impacting your channel. Don't don't worry about me. It's, it's all good. <laughs> There's lots of games yeah. being developed. Um, less ports, maybe, going forward. Yes, but... Still lots of games, lots of games to play. Mm -hmm. Please don't worry about me. I'm the last of the concern, really. And we can play but games that exist if we have them. Exactly. So yeah. we're not restricted in playing the games. No, we're it's not. other people selling the games not, that I think is us. more, we can more still of a play concern. Them. We can still play them. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, unless they're from the big end. Then they're a little bit yeah, well, annoying. Um, for me, I'm only <laughs> I really only interested in developing ports for the 2600. Mm. I lack the talent to design original games. Yeah, Juno First is a port. It's, yeah, I was surprised too. I didn't know about it. It's mm -hmm. fairly rare. Um, and it's amazing, mm -hmm. uh, Chris Walton's version of it. Oh my God. Uh, for me, I'm only uh, interested in developing ports for the 2600. I lack the talent to design original games and I enjoy the challenge of porting seemingly impossible games to the 2600. See, Xevious. Uh, I also enjoy the feeling that we're filling gaps in the 2600 gaming library. As a result, I definitely won't be switching to developing original homebrews. And I also don't intend to stop developing ports for the 2600. There you go. Hmm, how mm. does that work? Um, I'm hoping that some way will be found to license the IP. There you go. So that they continue to be sold, but this is probably just a pipe dream. Um, I'm skeptical, yeah, because a lot of these titles belong to IP holders that are so big mm. your email to them goes in the bin like they don't even read it yeah. like, it doesn't even get to them um, I'm skeptical that changing the game assets will protect us from IP holders in general yeah 
As a result, I will just make the binaries freely available so mm -hmm. they can continue to be played on the Harmony cart. So there there's what Chris Walton's going to be doing mm -hmm. uh, until I'm told to stop. <laughs> <laughs> stop it! Yeah. Uh, this isn't as appealing as releasing a physical cart, but means I can con still continue developing games and sharing them with the community. Yeah. And I think that is a big draw mm. for a lot of developers, and I can see that having a physical cartridge that their game is on, their name is on, a box, a manual like you would get back in the 70s, 80s with the Atari 2600 or any of these platforms mm -hmm. and to go, I, I made this. This is my game. Yeah. It's real. It's tangible, right? Mm. And for them not to be able to do that anymore, I can, I can see it's, it's a massive let, letdown. That's for sure. Uh, Carlos Centeno, uh, Raymond C. Um, I'm still a little sad about this. Uh, he did uh, The End and a um, mm. number of other games. Don't come to mind right now. Does he list them? No. Um, and he's making Lucky Chase yeah. for the 2600. Uh, I'm still a little sad about this news. Albert wrote me two days before announcing the final sale of my games, The End and Stratavox. Stratavox. There, we go. there you go. Yeah. Um, at the Atari Age store. To tell you the truth, I also became concerned about the legal rights of these games when I was making them. But then I thought that I was not going to have any problem because these are too old of a games, of a game, more than 40 years, and it affects no one when we port them to the Atari mm. 2600. And nobody's going to be making official ports of the end in Stratavox, which I'd never heard mm -hmm. of before, um, from the of IP holders. It's just not going to happen. Um, our intention as programmers is to make games that we would want, uh, have wanted to play on the Atari 2600 back in those days, and we only do it for fun. I understand Albert perfectly, and I'm sure he also is a little sad with this. Mm. Oh, for sure. Uh, he just does not want any legal problems selling our arcade ports in his store. Mm. In fact, I almost immediately thought of John Shampo and all the other great ports he has made so far that are already in the store and thought that he is the most affected uh, with this shutdown. Also, Bob DeCrescenzo. Mm -hmm. uh, Galagon's getting pulled. Yes, RC70. Um, uh, he has made so far in the store, and I thought that he is most affected with the situation. Today, I saw your last video of him presenting Turbo Arcade and find out that he also has a store. Will he be able to make cartridges as well? Yes. Um, possibly. We'll <laughs> see. <laughs> At least for PRG, 50 of them. Yeah. Um, I would like to continue making arcade game ports, but I would eliminate everything that could violate any copyright and in this way i would have the possibility of being published in the store so mm. he's going to go the route of changing all the things that could be infringing uh albert told me that he is interested in selling lucky chase in the store but is necessary to evaluate it as it requires changes to um achieve it yeah mm. because some of the things are very close yeah. um to the original game yeah maze layout you can change that, make it a little different, make the power, the bonus items a little different, make the enemies and you a little different, then you're maybe in the clear. <laughs> uh, Daryl Genther, Daryl1970. I was always bummed that Pango and Mousetrap could not be official. Mm -hmm. I enjoy porting games. I get a lot of satisfaction of trying to capture the feel of the originals. I also try to bring some of my favorite games to the 7800, especially titles I feel should be there. Mm. Before offering Pango and Mousetrap as unofficial games or changing graphics and music, I would like to hold out and see if they could be officially licensed. When I started toying with the idea of Mr. Do, I actually searched for the license holder. I was not excited about changing the game too much, and there wasn't a good name for it. I felt Pango and Mousetrap are just too close to throw that out the window. Offering them unofficially could impede chances of them becoming official. I would like to try my hand at some originals. I'm not sure how my 7th to ninth grade game ideas would really translate into real games. Howard Scott Warshaw has often shared that it's a different mentality to create, uh, to create versus port. Yeah, I can see that. It's something I'd like to try. I would be interested in exploring that side of things. Hmm. The big problem for me is that I need a plan. My time is limited, so I just want to sit down and watch something come to life. It's hard to say which way my bottle will point, but I definitely enjoy creating on the 7800. 
Maybe there will be licensed games that need a rotation of programmers. I'd be up for that, too. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm bummed that I do not have anything for PRGE. Um, mm -hmm. Because these games won't be coming out, oh, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, it will change the dynamic a little. Mm -hmm. I hope to still see some of the others there, but I have to wonder if this will affect some who may have planned to come for their game. Mm -hmm. It'll be good to see whomever, whomever may still be there. Yeah. We'll be there. Yeah. So you can say <laughs> hi to say us. say hi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would like to be able to release ROMs for the SD cards. There are a lot of unanswered questions, though. As I mentioned, I do not want to jeopardize the possibility of legit licenses. Mm. I doubt they'll ever be possible for the Sailor game, though. Hmm. What game is that? Hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how I'll be able to handle that one. He's talking about Pop-Out. I, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and he raises a legit concern about yeah. releasing the game and then asking for permission. Yeah. But on the other hand, I also thought up asking permission and them saying no, and then you're on their radar and they're doing searches yeah. every couple months for you yeah. releasing this game on 2600 because it's I mean, negligible for them to... Do, do you search. release it, get a cease and desist letter, and then say, hey, is there a way I can license it? Because at least you have the product there to say, hey, people really like this. That's Would possible. you let me license it? And you know who's bothered by it, and you have a direct contact to their lawyer. Because we were talking That's about a recent example of um, a piece of art in Vancouver. I don't know mm. if you want to bring this up, because it's kind of an interesting situation. Sure. It's a cross... Uh, anybody yeah. who lives in Vancouver knows this cross. It's a huge piece of artwork installed on a, on the hill overlooking Vancouver. And it's uh, a cross that says uh, Van, Van East. East. Yeah, so it's East Vancouver. We live in Vancouver, uh, East Vancouver. Which is traditionally, like, was the Little Italy part yeah. of the city. And so kind of it, it's sort of this big lit up white cross. Massive. Um, and and it's, it's become iconic. And it's also yeah. a tribute to um, people who've lost their lives to drug addiction as well, I believe. Is it? I didn't know that. I believe so. Oh, okay. Because it, it happens in East Vancouver. Oh, I, I don't know if, it, if it's associated to that. The anyway, people side. have taken, anyway. taken that to be what it yeah, is. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but it, it's a very nice artwork, and yeah. people tell, sell t-shirts and stuff. And it was commissioned by the city of Vancouver. Yes. So the city of Vancouver owns the licensing rights to this particular piece of art because they yeah. they basically asked someone to create it, I believe. Yeah, and there's stores around here that sell t-shirts and hats and stuff legally. You see them all over licensed. the place. Yeah. And there's a, a newspaper called uh, Vancouver is Awesome. Yeah, a web website more than anything, I Online think. Online newspaper. Online yeah. newspaper, yeah. And they have been selling the, the Van, Van East Cross on t-shirts and stuff as well yeah and they got a cease and desist yes and they're like well, what the hell and then they looked into it and they approached the city of vancouver and the city of vancouver says yep you can get a license for this no problem and the licensing cost was a dollar yeah one dollar and and they applied for it and got it and yeah. they're like w why what is going on why is it why did you send a cease and desist when you could have yeah. reached out and just said, hey, you want to pay a dollar and get it licensed? Yeah. But we figure it's because for legal reasons, they still want some control over it. They don't want people to create things that may be defame or defamatory towards the just city not in the spirit of or, or the, the art or the yeah. artist, I guess. So they want to keep track of things. Yeah, yeah. so they require everyone to pay a dollar licensing fee. Now, that and, would be amazing and for all why, of this. Why can't yeah. these... These I, companies that hold on to the IPs or the copyrights yeah. of these games that are 40 years old not come to some kind of agreement that way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, they I know, just don't understand. They know these games are not going to make any money for them. Well, yeah. They'll probably cost money for them. Yeah. So set up something really easy. Yeah. People can approach them, say, this is my plan. Can I have licensing? Yeah. Here's my dollar. Yeah. They get to go, yes, all this plan looks yeah. really good. I yeah. buy that for a dollar. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. That's in Robocop. Um, <laughs> um, and then they they can actually get even harsher on people that don't apply for IP and yeah. shut down everything that hasn't gone permission. 
Yeah. And then go, yes, you can do it. That looks good. Yeah. You did a great job. Yeah. That is in the spirit. You did awesome. Well, that's just it. You can maintain, you can police that IP and still offer the opportunity for people to yeah. to license what they've done. So that would be done. high that would be in the nice. sky, absolutely perfect <laughs> condition. As Charles Whelan says, because they are greedy. And that is yeah. absolutely possible, too. I mean, you get the right people, though, and, and they yes. understand. Like, you know... Like the it, people that it's a win-win for look. them if yeah. a good product comes out. Makes them look amazing. It makes them look great, and if they decide down the line that like, they want to license it for more money to someone else, like then... Tozai with with Load Runner, yeah, or Boulder Dash, it makes them look amazing. It's like, oh my god, this is officially licensed. It, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, and then it brings attention, and then maybe someone wants to create that game on, you know, on uh, on an iPhone or what do you call it? Um, yeah. uh, that platform. Uh, iOS platform, and yeah. then maybe they want to make more money off of that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I really wish people were more but reasonable. Set, but set up something that's easy to do. Yeah. That has reasonable licensing. Yeah. And not just shut everything down. Exactly. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So if anyone's listening. D Train <laughs> puts it perfectly. So what the city of yeah. Vancouver is doing, doing is both policing their trademarks. Yes. While also allowing people to use it under certain circumstances exactly and having a path to do it and and what you see yeah. is there are a lot of artists and smaller companies and smaller businesses that create art with that cross and create t-shirts yeah. and there's a lot of companies that use it and i think it's a win-win for the people in the city to have you know access to, access to those images happy about the image and yeah. wear it yeah anyway I wish more companies would do that. I think that would make a lot more sense. But I digress. <laughs> um, Adaro Spice Jr. Uh, definitely hate to see it, but I understand why Al has made this decision, and I'm very grateful he's having a last chance sale instead of just removing the games without any warning. Yes. That is that is really good, rather than just gone yeah. immediately. Yeah. And they're on sale, too. It's great. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, Draconian is my only game affected. I asked about Medieval Mayhem and Space Rocks. Al is hopeful they can remain. Mm. Likewise, for Frantic, it might be allowed. That's mm. his upcoming game that takes Berserk and um, Frenzy, puts them together into one cartridge. It's awesome. You can download early versions in the, in the uh, forums right mm. now. Uh, Al is not able to go into further detail about that at this time. As such, it would not surprise me if another last chance sale occurs that includes Medieval Mayhem, Space Rocks, and others, as another pass mm -hmm. might go through. Uh, for any uh, removed games, I don't plan to look into other distributors, nor do I plan to self-publish. Mm. I also don't plan to revisit them to revise graphics or gameplay. Biggest factor for this decision is my games have been available for years, mm. so people who, are, who want them already have them. And, I, and I'm sure Dallas Spice Jr. knows his sales numbers. Yes. And yes. he's like, not many people are buying them right now. They've all bought them already. I mean, If it's... you have not bought <laughs> both of those games, you need to, especially Draconian. Oh, my God. Yeah. I love that game. Yeah. yeah. And the 2600 I test. <laughs> version. I, go, I play Bosconian in the arcade every yeah. chance I get. Yeah. Um, and, a, and Draconian is such a great version of it. Yeah. And the reality of sales is... It's the long tail of it. And, People always yeah. want to see what's new, right? They, they So yeah. it goes up and down. So, yeah. um, I'd rather invest time on something new than rather revising mm. uh, graphics manuals, etc. for games that are now just selling one to two copies per month. There mm. you go. So yeah, that's about expected, I guess. Mm. You know, everybody already has it. I will keep the ROMs freely available for personal use. Mm. So there you go. So there's a chance, or he will be releasing those, probably with the um, title, these are available for personal use, do not mm -hmm. put them on cartridge, etc., etc. Don't sell them on eBay. Don't do that. Uh, for Frantic, I'm continuing to work on it with the goal of selling it via Atari Age. As part of this, I'm working up a list of changes I can make so that it's inspired by instead of a direct port. Uh, initial items on the list are already in Frantic, the optional stealth mode and homing shots, mm -hmm. which just aren't in the original. So that changes up quite a bit, right? I can turn them into uh, uh, integral, non-optional parts of the game that appear in later levels. Having the robot's abilities evolve during the game would help differentiate Frantic from the original games. There you go. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, I'm not sure. Though I do want to finish the CDFJ Plus tutorial, 
get back to spicy, mm -hmm. spicy cats. Uh, that's his <laughs> that's his programming language. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, for making Atari Twenty Six Hundred <laughs> games in yeah, nice. relative to like the C C plus plus. Um, languages uh, and eventually makes stay frosty a trilogy there you go, there you go. Yeah. i didn't know if i heard him talk about that no, before that's, so that's, that's really, really cool exciting to hear. yeah yeah uh Esther says quick shout out to all the devs and their amazing work 10 year old me can't thank you enough for bringing us these ports yes exactly yeah. yes 100 percent stay frostiest he has to name it that. stay frostiest <laughs> i hope he does stay frosty Good three call. stay frostiest yeah, yeah. um uh, mm. Bob De Crescenzo. De Crescenzo. <laughs> I always say it wrong. I'll get it there. I'll get there, Bob. Thank I think you. You want to say the Crescenza? I think that's. What <laughs> I don't think that's. My, that's <laughs> not my know. influence. It's decrement. 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 Okay. Um, Sorry, Bob. <laughs> so, thank you for reaching out to me. I'm th at this point. At this point, I'm okay with just disappearing. From... No, I know. Do you want me to read it? Yeah. Okay. At this point, I'm just okay with just disappearing from the scene. I enjoyed making ports to see what the 7800 could do, but there are so many more talented homebrewers making original games for the 7800 now, it's not even an issue. To answer your specific points, I used to make the first run of games myself when I came out with a new one and am not interested in going that route again. I originally attempted to contact Namco every which way when I first did Pac-Man Collection and never heard anything back. The only game I may consider removing IP from is Bentley Bear's Crystal Quest uh, because it's just a matter of changing the graphics. If I do that, I will also change the levels to make it somewhat more different. I love doing ports, so I don't think this will be a possibility. Um, I think that's in reference to <clears throat> coming up with original games. Yeah. Um, and I have no plans on reaching out to any other Atari game distributors. It was either Albert or nobody, and it's been that way for the past 20 years. Oh, that's 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 tough. That's, I hope you. It's very nice. Yeah, I hope you reconsider on that if needed, I because so. I think I think there are probably distributors who'd be happy to distribute oh, my those God, games. Yes, of so, uh, thanks, man. It's been a great run. Mm. Yeah, it's a tough thing to read. That's really tough. Yeah. 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 Um, and Bob has been the most impacted yeah. by this with the n largest number of titles mm -hmm. um, disappearing from the Atari Age catalog. Um, I think it's 20, 23 mm -hmm. games. Um, and he's held the, held the torch for the Atari 7800 mm -hmm. for the longest time. Mm -hmm. and, um, he has made so many amazing games. Mm -hmm. um, and really the developers who make um, uh, 7800 games really... Mm -hmm. um, owe a lot to Bob for um, making these games over the years um, so it's it's really it's really tough to read this yeah I hope I hope you reconsider Bob uh, I hope so um, when when uh, when time yeah a little bit of time little passes bit of time. yeah we love your games and we we hope you know and you're an amazing person yeah having talked to you many times yes yeah yeah so um, and I know you're watching yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and you're in the chat, so yeah. uh, thank you for all the amazing games. Yeah. And I knew you were running out of Pac-Man games anyway. That's true. Um, That's true. <laughs> but maybe you can uh, come up with a new game. I know you don't want to. Um, maybe I know you release a lot of your games for free yeah. in the forums for people to play. Maybe that's a route as well yeah. that you'd consider in the future. Mm. Um, yeah. So <sighs> that's it's really tough. Mm -hmm. And finally, Lewis Hill, Muddy Funster, who is up right now at uh, three or four in the morning. Yeah, thank you for joining uh, us. Uh, drinking copious amounts of tea. Yes. He says he's running out. Tea and digestives, I hope. Or some <laughs> yes. biscuit of choice. He says he has uh, biscuits as well. Ex excellent. Um, <clears throat> um, Lewis Hill, Muddy Funster. Uh, thanks. Uh, no, it's no problem. <laughs> Muddy Funster, that's why I left last. Mm. Um, rich tea. Yep. Rich tea. We are, what, what do we, what do we, the oats, um... The, the oat, cookies? Yeah, the oat ones. I can't remember oh, what they're called. Oh, they're in an orange round cylinder uh, package. I don't know so why good. they're not jumping to mine, but that's our... Hobnobs. Our, Hobnobs, thank you. So good. Yeah, the... the yeah. Uh, thanks for reaching out and thank you for addressing this. I'm afraid your questions might have opened a Pandora's... bit of a Pandora's box. 
there's four parts to this. Okay. Uh, hefty ramble is incoming, and I tried yeah. to make the font small too. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure they can even read it on that screen. Uh, but... uh, I'll be putting these out after, okay. so you can read it okay. yourself. If you I don't know if you can this. zoom it in at all. Uh, on this screen, on that. Can you uh, zoom in and make it a little bigger? Because it looks. No. No, uh, you don't want to mess with I'll it. Okay, it that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Commercial Twitch Blitz. I missed all that. You can re rewind, I think. Don't you, thanks. Uh, I found out a couple days before the announcement happened, so it was a bit of a surprise, uh, as was the speed at which everything happened. There's been a lot to process after the announcement, and also a lot to consider for the future. I think we'll still be considering the impact weeks from now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for quite a while, I think. Um, I watched uh, John's interview with interest. I have the utmost respect for folks like John and Bob D. These guys have blazed a trail that other devs now walk, and I expect that the changes will have a much deeper impact on them, given the number of titles that they have in circulation and in the Atari Age store. I do feel immensely sorry for the loss of their games from the store, as there are some real labor. Uh, they, there are some real labor of lo love gems. Not just these guys, but also consider games like Popeye 7800, for example. Daryl poured his heart and soul into that game, and I deeply sympathize with it being pulled. It's a masterpiece. I could go on and on. Oh no, you have to watch five ads. Pac-Man Plus. What? Um, that's a lot of ads. Um, you can rewind it um, later or now, um, and then catch up. What? That's, that sucks. Oh no. It's it's still It can there. be re rewound though, right? I believe so. Okay. At least at the end you can rewind and watch it. Yeah. Um oh, no. I cried. Sorry. Yeah. Bob. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> um I watched John's interview with interest. I have the uh, Oh, I already watched it. I said that. Uh da, 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 da. it's really a shame really is a shame and it's very disappointing to think that all these ports will no longer be available in store. The effort put into coding, art uh, graphics, design, music, sound effects, the uh, boxes and manual is huge. I know the amount of effort that goes into the product and to think all of that is going away is tragic and very sad. Right now, I'm considering what I will do with each of the games that I have in production or complete. Coppers is the obvious place to start. As Al has already announced, that will be removed from the store. So after the sale period has elapsed, no more physical copies will be available. It's disappointing, but there really isn't much that can be done about that. All these ports will be lost like tears oh, and rain. Oh, no, no. Time to die. Oh, Blade oh, Runner quotes. Blade Runner quotes. One of the best quotes ever. Um, <clears throat> uh, people have asked after the ROM. I will in the next few days be allowing people to buy ROMs of coppers. I have a story about that after. In fact, that will extend to all my games, including EXO and older titles like Daredevil, as this is something that is long overdue on my part, and I've talked about it for years and not made it happen. My other titles are all original IPs and not ports <laughs> in the way that causes an issue. Danger, Danger Zone, which is so different than anything else yeah. that it might be related to. Bernie games are just the, their own thing. Mm. EXO is so different than the mm -hmm. inspiration it's from. Tire Tracks is very different, and Daredevil is very different too than anything else. It it doesn't. All those have like inspirations from other things, but all games do. Yeah. All games are built on pre previous games. They're all built mm -hmm. on Space War and Pong, and and all these early games just build, build, build. Uh, my other titles are all. Um, yeah, these will not be impacted. Artie is one that could be problematic. <clears throat> I've talked to Al about Artie. The assets used in the game are completely new and original and were created by me. In fact, some are derivatives of surplus EXO assets from World 3 and unused, unrealized World 6. There is a dev tidbit, tidbit. There's a dev tidbit. They are not even based on the original, except for the main character, but yes, a generic guy with a jetpack with much more detail. Night Driver versus Pole Position. Yeah. Artie has music, cutscenes, way more graphic, themed areas, etc. Artie plays slower than the original, with a different feel to the controls. A different controls, in fact. It's like 100% better. Uh, which a lot of folks commented on, including me. Based on that, uh, we've agreed that Artie would not fall foul of, of the change in store rules. So it should appear in due course. That said, I will probably make a few more tweaks to further distance uh, Artie from Hero. So in effect, it's a generic hero-like rather than a port. 
going through a vertical maze with dangers. Yep. To rescue somebody. There's yep. a billion games like that. Yep. Uh, we've agreed... Oh, vertical and horizontal. We've agreed that Artie is clearly not the same game as Hero, so for now, it should be okay for the store in due course. Sorry, that's why I'm reading it out, Cafe Man 2D. I'll post all these after. Um... He says, my aging eyes. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I this. said if you could zoom it in, but... No, really. No. Uh, um, it's, like, that's the size of the window. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are a couple other projects that I had at various stages of development that were ports in mm -hmm. the copper style, which are now paused indefinitely. I may pick up those in the future and release them as ROM only. I don't know yet. It's very sad. I know some of these titles. Mm. Um, Burning in the Tower of Doom will probably now be prioritized for my 7800 development for the time being, which is awesome. Burning in the Tower of Doom is really fun. Very challenging, too. We played that. Yeah. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, 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 yeah. Excellent. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Love that game. As it's the safest bet, along with some other original properties, but RD. Oh, Bernie. Hi, Bernie. Yep. You're, you're okay, Bernie. Yeah. Everything's okay with you. Uh, I may pick these up in the future and release them on ROM only. I don't know yet. Uh, Burning the Tower of Doom will probably be prioritized for my 7800 development for the time being, as it's the safest bet, along with some other original properties, but already isn't going away. So this change has forced me to reconsider my position on a few things. Mm -hmm. I've always held off releasing ROMs, ROMs for sale, partly to avoid hurting physical sales, and partly because I've never done it. I wasn't sure how to go about it in the best way. I've never released a single ROM. This will change going forward. And to be honest, it's been brought forward by these changes. This isn't some retaliation or anything like that. It's just something that's overdue. And I've been talking about it for over a year. And this turn of events has given me a bit of a kick in the ass to get that organized. I recognize that folks like boxed copies on their shelves. But equally, there are folks who like having the ROM yeah. on their multi-card, like I do. Mm -hmm. And I want to cater for them also going forward. I have no plans to move from Atari Age as my publisher. I have good relations with Al, a good relationship with Al and Atari Age to produce great quality products for people to enjoy. However, it's near certain in the, in the future that I'll not bother with any ports. Mm. It's likely to be too much to bother to either get licensing or publish them. Ultimately, I make games because I enjoy it and for people to enjoy playing them. I have more than enough original ideas to get on with. So I'll be moving more towards original games, which were <laughs> muddy man with many words, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, towards original games, which was mostly where I was focused anyway, before Coppers. I started to work on EXO2 already, as well as a couple other projects that are not ports. EXO2! Uh, EXO's not even released yet. <laughs> That's so funny. More on these in due course. Maybe add extra ideas for more levels. Mm. Uh, Coppers was my foray into ports, and I did like it, but that party now comes to an end. I like the end product to be published properly for those to enjoy, and if that can't happen with ports, then I'd rather not make them for now. Mm. Atari Age did proper, pro does proper releases. Like, better than original uh, games. Yep, uh, original run yep. of games. So <laughs> good. Oh, the boxes, manuals, everything is top notch. So I can see why people do not want to switch away from yep, Atari Age. I can see that too. Yeah. Regarding the whole topic, I also have a few more comments to add. A lot of folks have reached, uh, reacted with a lot of disappointment after the announcement, which objectively I can fully understand. I do think that there have been uh, some that have been a little too vocal in some respects with regard to their criticism and may have stepped over the line. Again, objectively, I can understand it, but there is a lot of unfair speculation flying around. I think that what this comes down to is this. Al wants to clean up and de-risk the store so he can more widely promote it in the future. Mm. I'm disappointed at the loss of so many truly fantastic games. And, and and just to that point, it I've always felt that because Al rides this line. Yeah. Yeah. Of he wants to promote the games, but he can't. Yeah. I can see that. Because it's dangerous. That. Yeah, and he, he doesn't want his his business to take a hit. Or the people making these games. Yeah, or the or people, like, for there to be collateral damage, too, where, yeah. where other people suddenly end up, you know, not being able to use Atari Age or something. That's right, right. So, or scared yeah. to use Atari Age or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, so I that 
I can 100% see. Mm. Al hasn't come out and said anything about why or what prompted this mm. yet. He'll do that in his own time. Yeah. Right now it's all speculation. So who knows? Uh, um, I'm disappointed at the loss of so many truly fantastic games, but I also understand Al's reasoning for doing what he's doing, and I respect that too. Al needs to do what is right for Atari Age, and if he wants to remove ports or items that could be deemed as a risk for the store, then that's absolutely his prerogative. Al is getting a bit of hate about this right now from some quarters, and I think that's unfair as there are two sides to this. A lot of people will be affected. Devs, consumers, Albert too. Mm. I don't think that there are any winners here, unfortunately. Not, no, there are no, absolutely no winners. It's really, really sad. Um, the effect on me is minimal, the loss of coppers. Yes, of course, I'm disappointed that this game is a result of hundreds of hours of coding, art, design, music from Bobby, testing by Steve, Robert, and Jesse, artwork from Atari Boy for the box. It's hugely disappointing, but for folks like Bob and John, multiply that by 10 or 20. It put my own, puts my own sense of loss into perspective. Mm. So in summary, I will start to release ROMs, as that's something that's long overdue, and this has given me a kick to get the, get the kick to get that done. Atari Age will remain as my publisher for all of my original titles, and I'll not be bothering with ports in the traditional sense in the future. Also, a lot of folks are like, change the name or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that easy, <laughs> not I don't think. that easy. <laughs> and, and, it, and really, for a lot of games, that's not going to satisfy the bar that is now in place. Yeah. No. If it looks like a duck, it walks like a duck, and sounds like a duck, it's it's usually a duck. Yeah. Calling it a dog doesn't it doesn't make it one. It's Triangle Ernie. Yes. <laughs> it's Triangle Ernie. <laughs> yeah. um, Coppers is a good example. It looks, sounds, and feels yeah. like Keystone Capers. Yeah. It's near impossible to copyright gameplay or game mechanics, so I'm led to believe, and that's what I've heard over and over again. Mm. Otherwise, there really would be no video games. Mm. I copyright jumping in yeah. video games. No, no, I no. copyright firing a missile. Yeah. It's like gone. That's that's why clothing also is not copyrighted. copyrightable. Yeah. Because we would be wearing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. We, like one person would sell jeans. Can you I imagine copyright, that world? I copyright buttons. Yeah. I copyright yeah, zippers. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. That's 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 re there is a balance yeah. between protecting somebody's rights. Yeah and overreach yeah and there's the line you can't copyright mechanics yeah um but game assets like graphics or music are a different beast altogether mm -hmm. rt is a good example it's like hero but it's not hero as lots of stuff is different graphics control story music like everything is very different in yeah even, like and if, that's genres, right? Like role-playing yeah. games. They have very similar mechanics. Oh, there's a million... They're all tracing back to D &D. like Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. But I D &D mean, things. there's a million games like that now. Yep. And they all use very similar mechanics, but they have different concepts in them. And, you yep. know. Yep. You can make a Monopoly game, but just don't call it Monopoly. <laughs> make it a triangle, no. you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, coppers... Uh, d -d -d uh, coppers, on the other hand, even though the graphics are all new and remasters, you can tell it's still a derivative work of the original. I'm not a lawyer, and that's just my layperson interpretation, but I think that's the deciding factor, and a lot of games in the store fall on the wrong side of that, of the line, of for unfortunately. Anyway, I've written far more than I intended to, as this is quite an emotive subject. I disagree with a lot of what has been uh, written by folks on the interwebs and social media who are not understanding the topics or concepts involved and how they affect the developers and the overall sense of loss mm -hmm. right now. And that's why I wanted to do uh, read out the statements from the people who are directly affected. Yeah. The developers who make these games, whose games are being pulled from the store and whose future games are not going to be releasable as is in the store. Yeah. Um, to dispel any things that people are making up. Yeah. There's been nothing said by Al of why this is being done. Just that he, well, there's a little bit. He says he wants to have just... Be able to promote more. Be able, uh, I don't think he said that. Oh, okay, someone said that there. Oh, okay, so, yeah. yeah that, that, that was a suspicion. That he wants to move yeah. forward with original IPs. Yeah. Um, so that it's just easier. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a no, there's no landmines in there, right? As far yeah. as something getting pulled, so exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um. So there. Oh yeah, Paramount CBS also clamped down hard on people making Star Trek yes. fan films a few years ago. Yeah. 
which is unfortunate because the original Regine Roddenberry gave it a green light to anyone <sighs> making fan films yeah. for no money. Yeah. Um, just like Star Wars as well. Anybody could make fanfic things without any money being yeah. involved. But Gene Roddenberry died. <laughs> and now somebody else owns it and they they, have, they want more control. They want control. And yeah. and they came out with a bunch of new Star Trek uh, TV series the and movies. Infinite. Yeah. And so all of Lots. this is timed and well, um, you know, devised. Yeah. Because they want to pull that stuff before they get their own product out there. And that tends to be what these big companies do, which is unfortunate. Yeah. And RC70, yeah. no one has time or money to fight the lawyers. No. Um, none of these developers no. are interested in going toe to toe with the infinite pockets of some of these massive companies. And all it does is it drags like, out, even in, when someone's not in the wrong. Yeah. Like, they try to go up against out Activision. For years. They Activision? drag out for years. Like, like in, in um, yeah. Muddy Funster's case, yeah. Hero versus Artie. Yeah. You can't fight Activision. You don't really want to. Activision's yeah. a multi billion dollar company. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, so, there's uh, a general overview. Yeah, <laughs> it's not bad mouth the good people behind all things Star Trek. <laughs> oh, well, no, no. no one's bad mouthing the them. Lawyers. It's it's really the, the the corporate, the corporations, not the people who make it really, um, who <clears throat> who want to um, kind of ensure their investments. I think that's what yes. it comes down to. Yeah. They, um, copyright trolls. Uh, yeah, well, that too. Yeah, yeah. There are there are people um, that have just brought up IPs. Yeah, just it's just massive brutal. lists of IPs yeah. and have no interest in actually making anything. Yeah, just suing people. Yeah, that's brutal. I don't know if that ex. I haven't seen anything in the video game realm. Yeah, of that. Um, I know Atari has been buying up a lot of IPs, um, but they are actually making things. Yeah, they have a console out. They're putting out stuff. Yeah, um, which brings me to my next story actually in a completely unrelated topic <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay um, we got to the end of page four uh, yeah it's all over. right thank you muddy funster we love hearing your comments <laughs> uh in a completely unrelated uh topic bob uh uh, Di Crescenzo. Yes. Uh, Di Crescenzo's fail safe is coming to the atari vcs oh nice um uh, not the vcs that we know the vcs that is new nice from atari sa um, so here's the post. Pac-Man Plus says, Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to get out there that uh, the game, he posted this a couple hours ago, a game that I did for the 7800 Failsafe, which is so good. Remember that's a tank game? And you oh, um, yes. have different things. You go through mazes, trees, and yeah. things are uh, rotating and yes. shooting at you. Fantastic. Oh my god, it's such yeah, a yeah, great yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, great game. Which is sort of a countermeasure to will be put in the VCS store 7800 section tonight or tomorrow. I wasn't sure if I was allowed to talk about this, but I was given the green light. Excellent. Yes, I congratulations, Bob, of course. Yes. Um, and there seems to be a ramp up of homebrews coming uh, and new Atari games um, that have come to the Atari VCS. On the Atari 2600 side, um, there has been alien abduction recently in the past month. That is a brand new game. Mm hmm by the original author of Hero, once again, is coming mm -hmm. up. Um, and it, it, it's an exclusive on the Atari VCS. Okay. But it's an actual 2600 game in an emulation wrapper on the Atari VCS. Okay. So you play it through the VCS, and it's not released anywhere else. There's possible plans to put it on cartridge. Nothing okay. solid yet. Okay. Um, Amoeba Jump and uh tower uh towers of rubble yeah tower of rubble yeah um by dinoid as i've mentioned many times yes are both now on the atari vcs excellent excellent um catacombs of chaos and retro game quest by uh john hancock okay who we saw yeah. i i i neglected to say hi to him at the vancouver retro gaming, gaming expo we were very, there for a very short time yeah we saw him and then we went back and he was gone he was so doing his talk he was doing his talk but I, I, Hi, John. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, I didn't get to say hi to you. Yeah. Um, and also, most recently, Mr. Run and Jump, who, yeah. where there's a demo out right now. Mm. Um, they are releasing a cartridge of that for the 2600. Um, Pre-orders are 
coming soon next month, I think, mm. for the cartridge. And the 2600 game is going to be, or is on the system right now. And of course, now fail safe for the Atari 7800. I don't have one, so I can't see, but that's my list so far of mm. nice. homebrews that could be played on that system. Nice. Um, some aren't available to play on that system because they're exclusives right now. Yeah. Which uh, makes me think it might be in my best interest to buy one <laughs> because I want to play these games yeah. and I literally cannot play these games Yeah. without it. Yeah. And they are homebrew? Yeah. Made by Atari? Like, Mr. Run and Jump is 100% homebrew. It was made before the Atari VCS was put out. Yes. And uh, and then a computer version, upgraded version of it was made. And then Atari licensed both of those for their mm -hmm. system. Um, so that's a homebrew. Alien Abduction, I don't know how that came about. Whether it was specifically made for the Atari VCS or he was making it beforehand and then Atari asked him to put it on there. I'm not sure. Um, so we'll see. Which leads me to my, um, where is it? There it is. My poll question. There's a poll question. It's yes. The latest through a stream. I think a poll question oh, has ever come up. <laughs> Should I buy an Atari VACS? Oh, from a, interesting. From Atari SA. Huh. Um, the answers are one, yes. I mean, nothing else to say. <laughs> Um, two, no, the exclusives are just a ploy to get you to buy the system. Don't fall for it. Number three, no, the console's too expensive. Because okay. for the hardware, yes, it's too expensive. But it's not just the hardware, it's their interface. It's their infrastructure. Yeah. You're paying for that, too. It's not no. just the parts. Mighty Funster, they aren't available in the UK. Oh, wow. Are they available in Canada? That makes me wonder. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know. Is there's an internet component to it, obviously, but uh, that's true. Yeah. Um, number four. No. Wait for the games to come out in cart slash binary. binary. Mm. Number five. <laughs> RC no 70. other reasons. RC seventy <laughs> says fuck them. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that answer anymore. Really? It used to be that they yeah. used to sell stores. Uh, yeah. sell, sorry. Um, sell speaker hats. Proposed to open hotels oh god yeah and sell crypto yeah oh yeah they did sell they crypto, seem to they? have moved on from that attitude since releasing the atari vcs and they're actually releasing games yeah yeah decent, that's interesting decent games i wonder if their management has changed because i don't think the company i haven't been really paying attention no. because i didn't care before i think we need to find some some history about yeah. the, that business and what's going on there because yeah you're right they've they've shifted their attention from just selling t-shirts to <clears> selling <throat> t-shirts to um yeah yeah to uh actually going back into game the game business yeah so, yeah and, and it's they are supporting yeah homebrew by putting mr run and jump on there and, yeah and uh the new hero game alien abduction yeah um maybe they're turning themselves around a bit now yeah. um so hmm. I thank don't know. you uh, so money funster he's run out of tea oh. so he's going to bed have a good have night a good thank you for Mighty joining funster. us we thank know you. it's uh pretty far in the future it is there pretty so far in the future yeah it's the next day uh tea is a metaphor whiskey <laughs> maybe maybe yeah, um, it's a yeah, British term for whiskey. That's that's yeah. D Train says, yeah, management changed. Is Alien Abduction getting a physical cart release? Uh, I it's up in the air. I think they want to. I think it, it's been toyed yeah. around. I think they will. They have the manufacturing because they have released, they've sold that ten pack, way overpriced. Well, depends. It's a hundred U.S. dollars for each game. Yeah, they're old games just being re-released. The cartridges are very cool. The packaging is very cool. It's, it's the same game as before, so it's really for collectors. Um, they're all sold out, but anyway. I'm not too keen on that. That seems like a money grab. Um, it's just pandering to people that like it. You can buy the actual game for dollars Yeah. in yeah. bins. Yeah. Um, there's also a rumor floating around. It's just a rumor. I doubt it has any credibility 
that they're going to make an add-on to it. It would have to be like a USB add-on, like a it would be a cart dumper. Okay. And you can actually put cartridges in it. Well, oh, essentially it'd be a cart dumper because it's not going to play it separately. Huh. Um, hmm. Because they are releasing cartridges. And probably people are going, what do I play these on? Uh, and I, I, I hook it up to my modern 4K TV and all I get is garbage on it. That's true. And this RF, I don't have an RF in on my new TV. Mm. And I looked on our new TV, it doesn't have an RF in. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, no, it must have an RF in. Because we get uh, over-the-air channels. Yeah, it's just yeah, occupied no, no, we right do. now. Yeah, That's yeah. why I could find we have, it. We have a... We yeah, have a, anyway, it's difficult. An antenna, yeah. Um, so basically a Retron 77, except it works. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> no, the cart dumper is next to useless on Oh, that. is it? <laughs> it only does, like, just barely right. does anything. Yeah. Plug in the cart, it reads it, dumps the, cons to, the contents to run an emulation. That's what the Retron 77 okay. does. For I old carts? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I really doubt that Atari would release a box that d dumps carts. Like, it well, seems like a lot of work. You're either going to sell carts or you're going to have a cart dumper. <laughs> so that if people have old games, they can dump it on the system. Yeah. I don't know. Get uh, a CRT. We need to keep them out of the landfills anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. There you go. I Aren't don't know. Very dangerous? That's just a rumor. Uh, it's totally unsubstantiated. Yeah. I wouldn't bother putting anything about that into it. Uh, what about pagination and co-processing? Exactly. It's, that's a whole other thing because some of these games with the arm, okay, it has yes. to constantly be active. It can't just dump the contents. Yeah. So it ha you can't just dump it. Yeah. So, yeah. Don't confi confuse, confuse issues issue with, with the facts. With the facts yeah. uh, confuse the issue with facts. Yeah, uh, facts are annoying. Yeah, um, it always get in the way of. A good anyway, time, that's speculation. You know? um, um, oh, you're so silly. So so far, the yeses are twenty eight percent, and all the noes added up, because <laughs> you have to do it that way. Yeah, is seventy two percent. No. <laughs> yeah. Don't it's, do and it. It's not, it's not inexpensive. How much is it, the VCS? I think you can get one for two hundred US. It does. It runs Linux. I wish you could just get download their interface yeah. and buy their interface for a hundred dollars or and whatever. And put it on a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> and put it on any like a computer. Yeah, any yeah, of these no, true, yeah. true, yeah. I think it's one ninety nine US. <laughs> RC seventy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh oh, are we looking it up now? Well, I just I just want to make sure. Yeah. How much it is before I start spouting off about things I don't know anything about. Oops, not games. Shop. There you go, VCS. Tar VCS. Um, there's a collector's edition, which is more expensive than the all-in-one bundle wow. than the base. It does look it's street time. Oh, yum, yum, yeah. yum, yum. The cheapest one is one ninety nine, and you don't get a joystick. The base, you no joystick. joystick. Um, yeah. wow. So really, the Canadian one you want. Canadian or U.S. Oh, this is all. Sorry, oh, guys. Oh my god. <laughs> this is all U.S. Of course. Yeah, of course. Two ninety nine U.S. So after importing, that's close to five hundred dollars. I say to that five hundred dollars Canadian. Yeah, probably. So oh. no. No. It would make more sense just to make an FPGA console that can read use real cartridges a la uh, the analog hundred percent. Yeah. FPGA. All right. And I'm sure that's what they would do. Do you think these guys these guys need some uh, food? Yeah. Let's reset Does the points. Does it sound like they're crying? Are you reset crying? Reset the points. All right. Let me. I take one for half of that. Yeah, they were on sale for like a little bit of money off. Yeah, three hundred and Nintendo Switch, exactly. Yes, yes. Yes, I would pick a Switch Nintendo over that. Nintendo Switch any day. Yeah. Okay, ready? Yep. There you go. Ready? Oh, one and one. Good. Shut the door. Quick while he's eating. <gasps> nope. <laughs> oh my god, he tried to run out. He doesn't he does. like being locked in. <laughs> okay, one and one. One and okay. one. Oh, that was Atari. It was Atari. Oh, and he just knocked it into uh, oh, he's... Sprite's. Uh, he knocked it out of bounds. Oh, he... oh, he got it though. Yeah, he was very adamant yeah. about getting that. Good night. Nope. It's too soft. Oh, good night, Harder. Oh, good. Nope, oh. that's not for you. Go, ring it. Ring it. Ring it. Atari, ring the bell. <gasps> One more for for Sprite. No, I thought that was Atari. Nope. Nope. Yep. Feed him. 
I thought Spark he hasn't done it. Atari hit it though. He made. Didn't okay. He? I oh. looked away for a second. Here. I'm gonna give them one each. Okay. Three three tied up. Oh, oh four Sprite. three for Sprite. Oh, Atari's still in the still in the running though. If he can ring this bell, get it. Yes, yeah, three, very three. nice. Four four. He's tied it up. Oh, Sprite is too quick. Oh. oh, he's so good at grabbing it out of the air. Oh, he didn't get it out of the air that time though. Come Hit on. it! Come on! Hit it! Come on! You can do it! Oh, oh there we oh, go! Oh, good Atari! He's tied it up. Oh, Sprite's Sprite's distracted. Is he going for the other belt? No, he's come back to the oh. other one. Oh! Six five for Sprite. Oh, there we go! Atari's tied it up. He's just a second behind. And Sprite has dinged the bell again. Seven, seven, six for Sprite. Oh, oh! Oh, hit it again! Uh, hit it again! He hit it with his claw and yeah. made it ding. Oh, oh, there we go! Another one for Sprite and Atari. Sprite is at eight. Atari's now lagging behind a little bit. Oh, Sprite's gonna go for game point. It's nine seven for Sprite. It's a game point. Atari, can you get get it up hit to it. eight? Hit Come it, on. Atari! Hit, hit it! it. He's distracted. <gasps> oh, Atari's got it. Nine eight. He needs to do once more. Sprite is a little distracted still. No, it's too soft. He didn't ring it. <gasps> oh! Whoa! Atari just pulls in time. it off. No, Sprite hit it too. Sprite hit oh, it too. Did, okay, so it's ten. Yeah. Ten nine. Oh, I thought Atari did twice in a row. No, Atari hit it, and then okay. he hit it at exactly the same time. So it's ten. There you go. Ten, Extra nine. treats. Oh, I think I messed that My up. My goodness, but... photo finish. I thought, yeah. I, I, I saw them both hit it at the same time. I don't know what happened. Uh, <laughs> okay, open that. Oh, it's so hot in here now. Atari does not have the killer instinct. No. No, you have to kind of coax him. <laughs> 25 degrees. Woof. It's right, a scorcher. Where's my fan? There's more in here. still doing well. Oh, yeah. CPU's that's only nice. at 65 degrees. Need yeah, to check the replay. Amazing. I don't know. It's so close. So, so close. close. Let's go to the booth. <laughs> it's it's hard because you hear the bell ding, but you see them hit it, and sometimes it's hard to tell who hits okay. it. But they were very close. Next piece of news. It needs an umpire. There are two of us, and we still can't call it. Uh, Muddy Vision posted this uh, <laughs> yesterday. ROMs for Muddy Vision games are now available for purchase. As he said in his reaction yeah. um, to the store uh, changes, uh, read the full post before uh, before ordering details. Seven eight hundred ROMs that are now available. Okay. Keystone Coppers, Danger Zones, Danger Zone. EXO will have a separate thread shortly. Now keep in mind, EXO has still not been released no on cartridge yet. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Twenty six hundred ROMs that are now available. And we'll be playing EXO on Friday. Oh, excellent. Uh, the final version of it. Is that airline? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, 2600 ROMs that are now available. Tire Tracks and Daredevil. And he has given uh, compatibility with various platforms. So if you want mm -hmm. to buy them, you can play them on these. For 7800 games, uh, Danger Zone, Keystone Coppers are good for Dragonfly. 7800 Game Drive, which is not out yet, but they are compatible. Uh, Mr... A7800 uh, 5.2 Plus uh, Concerto Kart with a, a yellow. He did not say what yellow means. Um, I think it might be this. Retail Hokey chips are not supported. So you mm. might have to have a Pokey chip for that. That's why it's yellow. No. No, baby. <laughs> um, uh, with the Concerto Cart and uh, Concerto Module Zero, Keystone Coppers is working. Uh, the price for Danger Zone, $12.50. Uh, Keystone Coppers, $20. If you already own the cartridge of them, nice. you get uh, quite a, a good discount. discount. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there's a bunch of notes in here. Pro System based emulators are not supported because they're ancient. Do mm -hmm. not use. Do not use. Um, use A7800. Um, your mileage may vary on other multi-carts and emulators, mm -hmm. which are not tested. There's graphical noise on Concerto. Okay, that's an issue. Um, if you own a physical copy of either game and are happy to provide proof, email, or a similar proof of purchase from Atari Age, you get the ROM for a reduced price. Nice. For 2600 games, Tire Tracks, Daredevil, works on Harmony Encore. 
Uh, Stella, the latest, Retron with the community build, Retron 77. $10, $10 if you already own the cart. $8, $8. Or you can buy them together. Nice. For $14, which reduces even further. It's so $7. Um, ordering, private message, or you can email Money Vision there. Uh, it's temporary, and he plans to have a website up in a few weeks. Mm. There you go. And which ones, terms and conditions, blah, blah, who reads those things. Uh, yeah, check your compatibility before ordering. Have a good night, Nostalgic. Nice. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks for joining. Yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> so everybody's very excited about that. Very nice. Looks for, and that's her, that's her mirrors. Looking forward to support the ROM sales, but I'll miss the complete in boxes. Mm -hmm. S. Ramirez has a copy of everything Homebrew ever put out. And I saw him say in the chat earlier, I don't know if you missed it, that Probably. he will be at PRGE this year. Oh, excellent. He wasn't going to go and then <gasps> change his mind, and now he's coming. Excellent. So we'll be happy to see you. Yeah, uh, we'll go out for dinner. I think he, I think he might have uh, left already. I think I think he so. did. But uh, yeah, we'll be happy to see him when we're there. Yep. Uh, lots of reaction, obviously. Um, and uh, Batari's adding 48 points. 48k plus pokey support for danger zone so that'll be upgraded for even more excellent and the last piece of news i know it's front loaded with news hour and a half so far um somebody is making an atari 7800 portable <laughs> oh, yes okay, cool it's that is cool really cool looking wow um so there you go there's the thumbstick mm. the two buttons a screen built in. Uh, it's called the Selgus. <laughs> I don't know if that's the final name. It's got the uh, mono speaker there. Uh, pause, select, reset are buttons similar to where they are on the console. Ah. Uh, it's being done by Selgus. There we go. That's why the name is called Selgus. I've uh, been trying to finalize the board layout for the form factor I want for the portable. So far, working on the enclosure. Here's mm. the current state. Uh, if I have a comment, yep. if you go oh, back to that image, yep. I love the idea of the board. I would not put pause or reset anywhere near where your hands might rest. Yeah, they should be in the center. So either in the yeah. center or, or above. Or just moved over a bit. Yeah, maybe. Or well, above. But I know he's trying to emulate what it looks like. I yeah. would move them towards the screen because if your hands accidentally hit it, you're going to be pretty upset if you hit reset in the middle of your game. I don't think the hands will because they'll be gripping it by I the side. I think it depends on how big it is. It's a little hard to tell in that. It but is. I would probably move them in. I just don't a know personal if he has, comment. I think he has some measurements up here. Yeah, it just might be a good idea if that's mm. a possibility. Yeah. It might also not be a problem. Well, you can kind of tell by... Oh, the cart where does the cartridges go? On the, the bottom. Oh, it isn't that big. Whoa, see the cartridge size. Yeah. Okay, that is... Yeah, you can get an idea yes, based on the cartridge port. Thank there you, you ITC. Needs a Needs banana. A banana. <laughs> yeah. It is very small. It is wow, small. Wow, I'm impressed. Yeah. That's really cool. Wow, okay. Yeah. I thought it was way bigger. So that's really is a thumbstick. Yeah. Like really tiny. Neat though. That's super cool. Yeah. That's very neat. Um, let's see what else. Uh, the board is fully routed and finalized. So the board's done. Mm. Um, just more complexity than I'm wanting to take on right now. Cart Not going with unified NTSC PAL. I'm guessing <laughs> he's going to go for NTSC. Yeah. The last changes are due to physical location of some parts to fit the enclosure, well, which is why I need to iterate on the 3D model. Um, there, we've got an actual oh. 3D printing of it. I think your hands are still going to be on the side. Also, I think it'll still be fine. Also, the speaker. Is your hand going to block the speaker? A little bit, but it, there's enough for the audio yeah. to come out. Anyway. Yeah. It's probably too late for those that feedback anyway. So. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, no, probably. moving those buttons. Well, let's see the, the board design. I mean, the button is connected to the board, so you can often move the buttons, can't you? They don't have to be immediately yeah. above the, the inputs, no. do they? Oh, no, maybe they do. I don't you know. Can s I, I don't know if yeah. the buttons are actually, like, right below. Yeah. Let me just look at the this again. So it's pause. Is that power the one beside it might the be pause? a light i don't know like that yeah no it idea. might be power let's actually look at the back i think it's power that makes sense 
But let's look at the board design, and I think... Without having it in your hand, it's hard to tell the size of it, so... I don't think it one-to-one one one corresponds yeah. with anything on the board. So it might... might so you can put them anywhere possibly. and then wire them over. Yeah. What is this? Uh, ivory Tower. Well, if you remove the stuff you don't need, like the RF stuff... Yeah. And with modern PCB design, you can squish stuff in much closer and use SMD components when possible. I don't know what that means, but no. we're not uh, hardware people. <laughs> oh, video ground 3.3 volts. <laughs> we do like to watch a lot of repair videos. Repair videos, but you know, we just tangentially like pull a little bit of information from them, so they're always fun. Up, down, left, right, ground. Hmm. Interesting. Surface mount components, components versus, versus through th holes. Okay. okay. Uh, interesting. And I wonder if he's pilfering chips. Like, is okay. a po pokey chip going to be destroyed? Like, things like that. Or mm. pokey. Anyway, uh, so keep a watch on that. It looks amazing. Uh, uh, nothing like kicking back on the weekend with a cold, frosty well, one and watching, watching repair, repair videos. <laughs> Paddle oh. support. Oh. oh, I don't know if it has an external. Yeah. Because I don't think there is many. I don't see any plugs for anything else. I, I don't see. I don't see why you couldn't. <laughs> because it does have wiring yeah. for pins for an external external joystick. Yeah. Much like watching homebrew streams. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like uh, that was the opening in the back where the cartridge is. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Like, there is um, the screen. Sorry, everyone dizzy. No, it? no, it's it's upside down. If you look at, there's the yeah. cart. So it's it's that the board is flipped. Yeah, I'm not I'm not thinking yeah. about the board, but like no. that or that. There there could be an external port for. Um, oh, I see. A paddle. I don't know. Yeah. We'll we'll have to see. I don't I don't know yeah. if he um, mentions anything about paddles. Look above your mouse. That hole is in the shape of a D sub for a DB9. Oh, is it? Oh, yes, right there. Oh. It's like, yes, it is. Okay, so he does have an external DB9 um, port. Hmm. There you go. So he has thought ahead about uh, paddle support. No, I can see it right here. On this, on this right here. So I think, yeah, that's awesome. Very, very cool. Looks like he's made other, other handheld system. Sega uh, Genesis. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> kind of neat. Yeah, really, really cool. Okay, that's it for the news. <laughs> Not much news. A little bit of news. It just took what? Hour and a half. Yeah, well, that's not bad. I'll probably do for another drink now. So uh, I definitely am. <laughs> do you okay? <laughs> My water is get very low. Running low. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll I'll refresh in a second, but we yes. gotta play some games. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll play games. D train's today. off. <laughs> See D train. Longest new segment ever. Yeah, so. there was a lot to talk mm. about. Okay, let's switch over. Jaguar. And, and actually, these are very short. That's why. It's a good match. You have games in the show? It's all yeah. news all the time. Yeah. All news. Dab and dab long enough for Russia to flip regimes a couple of times. <laughs> That's right. Like, yikes. <laughs> okay, yeah. here you go. All right, thank you, thank you. So the first game we're going to be playing is um, Arkanoid 2, Revenge of Doe, and this is by Cyrano J. Nice. Um, I think we're good there. Loading, I'm loading. Load of that ROM. Okay. So this was originally released. This is a conversion from an Atari ST port uh, from 1988. Okay. Uh, by Imagine uh, Ocean Software. Uh, Imagine slash Ocean Software. Why are you using that one? We are, but oh. sometimes it's in port too. Gotcha. Press the button. Revenge of Doe. So left port uh, is Jagpad. Right port, you can use rotary. An ST mouse, an Amiga mouse, or audio. No, O for audio, which is option for audio. Um, arcade audio. Oh, we only get arcade audio. Um, and so originally posted on this on January 14th, 2015. 
Uh, he said, hmm, I think this one might need some rotary loving. Should I press two? Uh, nope. You just start with this, I think. You just start with that gamepad. Did you press it? Nope. Okay, I press it then. Turn up the volumes. Very cool screens. Um, and then on January 17th, 2015, he added in rotary controls into it. So I think you press B to start. Oh, love the sound. Oh, Arkanoid's so much fun. It's so good. But it's definitely not Breakout. It's its own thing. Arkanoid, not a port. <laughs> um, so, uh, in, in the... So she's using the rotary control right now, um, and this is Machine's uh, rotary uh, kit that I did to one of my um, yes. original Jaguar controllers. And it's... Uh, oh, God, I'm terrible at it. Um, you'll get better. Yeah, I, I've never been a great Arkanoid player. I always over-rotate. <laughs> over rotate. <laughs> yeah. That's your issue. Oh, and I'm hitting the end. Under rotate. Very under, uh, un unforgiving. So, in regards to converting games from Atari ST to Jaguar, uh, somebody posted in the thread that this was on 82 82-T-A uh, said, "What is it that you're doing? Do you have the source code for these games, or have you simply written a wrapper or something? Is this something I can do myself?" Cyrano J says, "Hey, calm down." I'm patching binaries. I don't have the source code. No, there is no wrapper. It wasn't simple. There you go. Now you're cooking. I told you, I'm, I over rotate all the time. I was under rotating. Under? Under, over. Just generally not rotating the way in I space need to. And on steroids! Yeah. Uh, RC70 says, holy cow, round one seems hard. Mm. I'm just not very good at this game. I feel like it should be more sensitive. There is a limit to these devices. Okay, my turn. No! No! My I have to get better at it! Play. No! No, you always <laughs> do this. Let me play, and I'm gonna play for the next 20 minutes. Oh, look, I did so well, and then we have to move on does to Does this game one. have sensitivity no. settings? Um, I believe it does. Oh, I should have written that down. Yep. Um, let me... So I wanna do it, it with my right hand, not my left. Well, you can. It's the only controller. You don't have any I buttons. That helps. Well, there's buttons, but you don't use them very often in this. There, I think he may have kept in the sensitivity settings, but that just means you have to rotate it more. Well, I have to. I, to get it where you want. I already it. feel like I'm rotating it a lot. I have to spin uh, it around, so I was wondering if it can be more sensitive. I think there is. Let me look it up. One in three on the numpad change the sp spinner sensitivity. So oh. it doesn't say what to what, but you can try it. Like as you're playing? Yes. Uh, Ivory Terror Collection says, yeah, just check both Arkanoids were released by Taito in the arcades back in the day. I knew the first one was as I remember seeing it in the arcades. That better? No. <laughs> Looks like you're moving faster. Of course, if you move faster, it's going to be more jumpy but you'll get there faster without having to over well, over rotate like yeah this is better steer it like an old manual steering. that's that's what i don't like is oh you can't run into it unfortunately it doesn't bounce off the the ends i'm just not very good at this game omanoid iomanoid is there an alternate name for this Not good at it. I run into it. Oh, it's better than the D pad, 100%. Because the D pad is a constant. Okay. Uh, it's pretty good. Well, I had Revenge of, Do of the of Doe for the PC, and my mother was able to beat it using just our keyboard back then. Wow. Sometimes keyboards are Sometimes easier. Keyboard is easier. Because. I don't know it's why. It's so precise. It is precise. With the um, the rotary controller. And some power-ups. Some power-ups. Narrow pain. 
Imperial Bricks. Missed the extender. Silver Bricks. Who, uh, who just subscribed? Uh, teleprompter 312, thank you for resubscribing. Thank you. How many months? Eight months. Eight Four months, months streak. It went fast. I got a fast thing and. Went too fast? Went way too fast. I need better uh... power ups. Power up seemed a little fast though, he. Uh, ugh, this one is next to useless. Really? That's the, better the for The glue me. one, the whatever it is. Sticky one. This is when you need the button. Missed it. Every single time, the ball is coming down at the exact same speed. <laughs> and I can never get it. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Voss controller. Revenge of dough. Yes, it is. Definitely revenge. I think that's... Oh, Taito even there. made a rotary controller for the NES version. Really? Yes, yes. <laughs> They did. I saw one at the last Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo. It was way too expensive. Oh, the rotary? Yeah, because they're pretty rare. Oh, I can see that. Only seen Were they made once. only for one game? Yep. <laughs> always when it uh, multiplies, I can never get it. Oh, it's always, so always, hard. You, oh, my God. Hopefully it slowed down. Oh, my God. There. S. That's what I need. There. Can I, can I maintain two? Yeah, stay up there. Do your work up there. Down to one again. Oh, it's fast. Oh, they're coming back. Why did that come back? Oh, they always do. They've been coming really? back the whole game. Yep. <gasps> hard. That's hard. insane. That looked like multi-multi-ball. Yes. Super multi-ball. And only released in Japan. Oh. oh, really? That's why it's so hard to find. Next time we go to Japan, which who knows when that'll be, I'll have to look for it because it'll be cheaper there. I think those things keep coming back, though. Yes. <gasps> oh, I like that one. Yes, gives you a bit more, um, gives you a trail. Mouse trails. Doesn't do anything when you're standing still, but when you're moving... Gives you a bit more. Oh, God, no! Okay, now you can play. Okay. <clears throat> multi, multi ball. Multi, multi ball. We were playing some pinball last Friday, too. Yeah, at a, at a restaurant here. Mm, pub. Publish. Yeah, sports bar restaurant. They didn't they have any arcade pinball. games. They did have arcade games, but they were like modern ones. Yeah. But they did have a wall of pinball machines, which was Very new ones. quite. So, no, not all of them. The ones Relatively on the right-hand side new. weren't... They're all pretty I mean, new. they did have computer components, but I think some of them weren't that new. Well, within 10 years, I think. Uh, I'd say 10 to 20. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yep, we're playing Jaguar today. We're playing the final games of the Rotary Controller. Yeah, did I even talk about what we're doing today? <laughs> These are all Rotary Controller games we played. Half the rotary controller games like a month ago, and this is these are the remaining rotary games. Rotary controller games for the Jaguar. There you go, double. No excuse now. <laughs> Went to the next level. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Undeserved, but sure. Oh, it changed the thing on the satataroid or something it said. Friend had an insane pinball collection, RC7, he says, and at one point in a warehouse a few blocks from me, it was the most magical time of my life. Oh, wow. Oh, we're playing Arkanoid. Uh, Tempest, we played that last time. Worked really well with the rotary controller, actually. I can yeah. beat the yeah. first level. So, the, they charged... Uh, it was a dollar a play, no, or... No, Was it? No, it was two dollars a play. Yes. Or a dollar fifty for, for two. two games. Yeah. So, you know, you play with a second person. Which, new uh, game, new pinballs I are expensive. Yeah, I I mean, I guess that's reasonable. I don't know what pinball a, goes for. A dollar fifty is, is fairly yeah. normal-ish for, you know... Yeah. 
Luckily, we're Thanks in Canada. Thanks for joining us, Beer Pocock. Carl G, ouch. Ouch. It depends on where you go, but yeah. I mean, they didn't... Some places you'll go to and they have, like, um, pay, pay by the hour. <laughs> um, but then they always charge extra for the pinball, I find. Always. And so you're paying a little bit more so on top of it. So, so I guess more it's to not maintain. that surprising that no. it's a buck fifty a game. No. Yes, Kitten Littles? He's like, more, please. Well, maybe in More a bit. Treats. People, people, you have to wait for the reset. <laughs> it's an hour since last time. You have to wait. It New is... pinballs, RC seventies. Um, um, controversial opinion. Maybe. Uh, what is it? New pinballs are kind of meh. The classics um, with LED upgrades is where it's at. One's moving. I like. I the like them all. I, there are some modern ones that I quite like. We played the Stranger Things game. That was brand new. It, it had. Was it had very the, very new. It had the last seasons. Like yes. cutscenes in it. Um, and I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. 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 There was a castle one that was really cool at a drawbridge. Medieval mayhem. Medieval? Or something not, like that. Not mayhem. But not mayhem, but medieval something. Medieval. Yeah. Medieval castle. It was good. And they had a bunch. Of, they had a bunch of other ones. This one goes right through. Them. I didn't know they still made new pinball machines. Oh, yeah. not very many, but few. A few. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Ivory Tower Collections, I installed all warm light LEDs oh, in my nice. Galaga cocktail cabinet in the game room a few years back. I want a Galaga cocktail cabinet. Yeah, don't we all? We don't have room for a cocktail cabinet. We could fit one somewhere. Maybe. Cocktail are the ones that are like... A table. A table. Yeah. See, I feel like that's more doable than a full-on oh, arcade. Oh, yeah. Way more doable. You just need to find a nice little corner of a room i mean at some point we're gonna probably redo our kitchen we'll have to incorporate. so we'll just take out the dining room and put it in our cave room Ooh. <laughs> you know you need who table. needs to eat i mean come on <laughs> okay we'll do one more each medieval madness that sounds that's, about right yeah 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 that, that sounds, sounds right. about right it was medieval something i would rather put in a upright you like can eat anywhere, main, yes. Main cabinet with all the controls. Like yeah. a spinner, a ball, two joysticks. Um, you really just need a standing height table. Because really, you just want to eat and get on with what you need to do. <laughs> yeah, cocktail cabinet in the dining room. Everyone wins. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, just get a glass table and put a bunch of CRTs facing upwards underneath. I wouldn't do CRTs. Well, it's I don't just know. too much. <laughs> too hot. LEDs. And then you can just play games while you're eating dinner. Oh, Isn't that yeah. what every kid dreams of? Well, you do want to get a new table. Living room <laughs> table. That's, it's so pointless. Like staring oh, I'm down joking. like that. I'm joking. That'd be terrible. Oh, so terrible. That's what it said. The, le the second level. We're so terrible at this. We are terrible Why at this. Why are we this? so terrible at this? I don't know. We just are. You know why? I swear with other Arkanoid games, it will bounce off the ends. Am I wrong? Off the ends. The well, sides? if you hit the edges of it, you yeah. fail. But I no. swear another yes. No, it yes. just bounces off. It can bounce off the sides. But sometimes you can ricochet off off by running into it. With this one, I feel like you died. Like what just happened there? What? Oh, the sides of your paddle. Of your paddle. Oh. I'm like it just seems sure. sensitive, but I don't know if that's just because I'm a terrible Arkanoid player or no, it's, it's as the... long as it touches your I can never get those. Why is the ball moving at the exact same rate as the power ups? No get... uh, R70, I don't think my kid has ever eaten a meal without a de device in front of them. That's true. Yeah. Pac-Man cocktail table, yeah. Made my ah, smaller. teleprompter. Dias Kilos is a pinball prodigy when it comes to pinball machines and his mods. So really? he was the one who said it was uh, medieval mayhem. Uh, not mayhem. Madness. Mayhem. Madness. It's so similar. That's, that's Daryl Sprite. I know, Dar I know, I know. Um, Daryl Spice Jr.'s game. game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some fun games there. Apparently, every. Um, Wednesday, this pub has pinball um, tournaments too. Yeah. Which I think is kind of neat. It's very cool. I'd Food love to see how good fine. the players are. 
Like, I'm know? sure it's it's probably a bunch of amateurs, but I bet there are a few really good players in there. Oh, God. Okay. Is Medieval Mayhem? I... That's a good question. Um... No, no, we're done. <laughs> yes? Is Doe the bad guy? Yeah, maybe. Revenge of Doe. I don't know. Are we having revenge? Or are they revenging because we finished the last game? The first Arkanoid. Good question. Who knows the lore of Arkanoid? I hope Medieval Mayhem isn't getting pulled. Don't know. Get that laser. Oh, it's so hard. Let's see. Let's see the list again. Uh, Atari Age Store. Nope. No, it's not. It's not being pulled, so... Medieval Mayhem's good for now. But who knows in the future? We shall see. I, I, what was the first game I bought from Atari Age? It was the first time we went to Portland Retro Gaming Expo. No, I ordered stuff before that. But the first game I bought at um, their booth... Press button. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, don't oh. neglect the ball. Sorry. It's too distracting. Okay. But I did meet Daryl Spice Jr. at the first time I went to Portland Retro Gaming Expo and had him mm. signed uh, Stay Frosty. Yeah. I think that I was the one. Yeah. It was either that. Yeah, it must have been that. Okay. Let's go to the next game, which we don't have a copy of the next game. Okay. Because, um... There is no binary that you can download oh. for it. It is only purchasable. Gotcha. So we're going to uh, look at a video of it. Um, <laughs> the game is Impulse X, and it is an Arkanoid style game. Okay. Um, by Matthias Domen. And uh, so let's just take a look at it. It was first released in 2011 at the EJAG Fest, November 19th. And it's a port of a Falcon, 1996 Falcon game. There we go. It's probably too loud. Let's turn that down a bit. Let's get to the game. Oh, it's almost at the gameplay. Um, uh, oh, Impulse X is still available for ninety-two dollars and seventy-five cents U.S. dollars, which is is very rich for my blood. Um, from Good Deal Games, but unfortunately, I don't have it on cart, so we can't play it. There's no demo version, anything like that. It was um, made available on CD and on cartridge for the Jaguar. Okay. You notice I don't have a CD add-on. No. Because it's really expensive. Oh my God, the CD add-on. Um, and the chances of you having to get it repaired is high, and you can play all the CD games off the Jaguar game drive anyway, so that's fine. Dabble Down says he think his was Thrust Plus for the first game that he bought. Nice. Atari game. I could trace it back, because I know I bought it online. Um, I wonder what it is. Let me look it up. Well, we have a which reminds me, I got an email today from Atari Age to re-up my subscription. So I'll have to do that. To support Atari Age. Atari Age Store. Welcome to the Atari Age Store. Confirmation. Okay, so the first games I ever bought from the Atari Age Store was Toy Shop Trouble. Okay. Uh, which is an awesome uh, Christmas game. Uh, still is stocking. Must have been... When did I order these? Oh, I ordered them on December 23rd. No wonder it was on the theme. Oh, yes, yes, yes. December 23rd, 2014. Stella nice. Stocking. Stay Frosty 2. Because Stella Stocking has Stay Frosty. Right? Gotcha. Juno First, which is CD-W's yes. game we're talking about. And Oystron. All nice. excellent games. There you go. Okay, so you've got a sense of what this is. Mm -hmm. It's it's Arkham. It's our <laughs> Okay. So, um, let's learn a little bit more about the game. I think I have information up from their website. 
There we go. Impulse X for Atari Jaguar is a breakout like game. It's like I said, support. Use the bat to control a ball to clear 40 play fields full of bricks. Uh, 40 levels. 40 levels. Um, password, two levels of difficulty, level editor. And it uses driving controller, which is the exact same mechanism as this. As that. There yes, you go. So that's why it's compatible. Um, modified jag pads. I'm guessing he means like this. That. Modified <laughs> jag pads. And digital mice. Okay. And I think they all work in a similar fashion. Gotcha. No, I think these work differently. Um, December 23rd. Were you thinking Albert had prime <laughs> shipping? That's right. I got it the next day. Yeah. No. <laughs> Um, if only. <laughs> Ivory Tower Collection says uh, Berserk VE and Coffee Yellow Copter. What is that? What is Coffee Yellow Copter? Yeah, look that up. Can you uh, tweak James's interest? Never heard of it. Oh, 5200 game. Okay. Mm. Coffee is a little copter, not allowed to go with the bigger rescue. Copter's on a mission. Okay, cute. You get to dodge things like lightning and water, and I don't know if that's something you need to get or you need to avoid. That well, looks pretty cute. I'll have to look and see if there's a binary mm. to try out and see if it's uh, ooh, five five stars all the way down. Very nice. There you go. Looks pretty good. <clears throat> okay. Um. Well, we can see that James hasn't played it. Nope. <laughs> nope. There you go, level editor, video footage, ordering. So, and then they give links to places where you can order it. Some are sold out. Um, but I know at least um, Good Deal Games is available for mm. this one. Okay, next game we're going to be playing is Project W, okay. also known as Warlords, oh. on the Jaguar, which is Medieval Mayhem. There you go. The Daryl Spice Jr. made. Um, okay, so let's switch back to the Jaguar. So this build is from February 22nd, 2018. Um, it's a 419k game made by uh, Frederic Descharm, known as a Fade ST, uh, top one. Um, and this game actually can use the four player Team tap nice. for the Jaguar. We don't have four people, so we won't Connect be using it. Team tap to a Jaguar. That's one. right. How to play four yeah. players. All you need to know is right and left directions, A button, and of course you can use a special anti G trick, GT trick. Not sure what that means. Uh, press, press zero, zero. on the Jag pad and look what happens. <laughs> Remember, this program is only the result of a silly contest and not a state of work of future release. So it was just a quick thing. Um, so. Yeah, so you can just use the rotary controller. I think you can press the A button. So you are playing in the top left. So there are no, AI? no computer opponents not in this. AI. I guess that's yeah. not the right. Term. Well, yeah. Is it? Yeah, people called it AI back then. <laughs> Even though it really. Now wasn't. we're talking about AI, and we really mean AI. <laughs> yeah, we really do because there are movements towards that yeah. now. Back then, it was a set of rules that the computer reacted to. Oh, Goodness. we just took out some of your stuff. Goodness. So there's no sound in this game. Oh, cute. Uh, from the readme.txt. Oh, defeated one of them. Now comes Did the I? next one. Did I defeat one of them? <laughs> well, you prevented yourself from dying. There let's you say. go. A uh, simple and dirty Warlords clone for the Atari Jaguar, coded and released during the retro gaming connection held in France at the beginning of November uh, 2008. Plays with four Jag pad connected oh, to Team Tap 1. Uh, or with only one jag pad, uh, player controls everything. So if you played just with one jag pad controller ah. by itself, ah. um, you control all four people at the same time, which is very ah. strange. Oh, uh, you no. can catch the ball with A oh, if you, you hold can. down the button. Shoot. Ah. Oof. If you want to. You don't have to, but might as well show that option if you can catch the ball. <laughs> and then release it with A now. as well. Oh, boy. I wasn't able to. And you didn't win. No, I wasn't able to hold it with a. Oh, I was. You can try again. Yeah, when I played it. 
Um, says, uh, done by Fadist oh, with help and support from the Jaguar team. Oh, you can just kill that guy. Just hold it right there. Didn't know that would have made life a lot easier. I wonder whatever happened to old Guru Ronan who made Castle Blast, Kafaman 2D says. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, developers that were just like, oh, you're going to have to do something different now. That just disappeared. You know, they're, you okay. know, the old school people are around for 10 years and, oh, there you go. Oh, so slow. <laughs> I would move it up because you have to pop the bubble. True. Good point. Mm, unless you really want to oh take gosh, out every so brick. Small. Nah, it's still not AI yet. It's large language models or whatever they're calling the ones for pictures and so on. Well, yes. Depends on what it is. Um, but really, you're giving... There, there are examples of AI out there. And, and you are building a rule set based on real world information that the computer is processing and making conclusions based on this set of oh you got both of them i don't know if that helps oh one goes fast one goes slow oh it doubled there you go now you got got to get rid of that last guy i think it does auto release after a while but maybe not all three Uh, nope. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. No, stop it. To be at an angle. There you go. Yay! Yay! Tanya wins! So with no <laughs> opponents. I lost last time with no <laughs> opponents. So there you go. Okay, next one we're going to be looking at... Oh, I've been changing the graphics. Oh my god. Oh no! Been telling me. You spend all that time with the graphics. I, I know. There's Impulse X. <laughs> he works very hard on those graphics, and there's then they Project don't show w. up. I mean, oh, I well. didn't do the Impulse X because it exists. Fair enough. Cartridge. Fair enough. But there's Project W. Nice. And I extended it and changed the screen. It's and very nice. Cut I like out it. the corners and yeah. the font is whatever. Okay, now for the next one. Pong. Oh. Traditional, old school. That's right. This pong. one's a very wonky. So is it? And as wonky as, pong. That's a good name. And for as pong. soon as you play through it once, it crashes. Love it. And we only have one rotary controller, so. Uh, yeah. I'm not playing against anyone, is what you're saying? Or you can you can can you not pong it without one? No, I don't think so. Oh, it has to be a rotary controller. But can the jag? Can the jet? Apparently not. We'll Carl see. G, apparently we'll not. We'll see. It's too much. I had some trouble loading it as well. Oh, there we go. Work this time. Nice. Very nice splash yeah. screen by Very Virtual nice Experience. Um, uh, Terry Shim yeah, Shim Shimbury. You can go up and down. Cursor up, cur cursor oh. down if you want to play uh, against me. We'll see. I couldn't get it working. Uh, A.K.A. Sharpman. Um, so A is restart. Maybe that's what happened. Option to start. It's on the other one, I guess. Yeah. Oh, it's single player. It's just you. Oh, my goodness. You can play it. No. Up, down. There you go. Now this does have rotor. I think I have to switch the um, ports. Yeah, I think you do. But let's at least show some gameplay. Yeah. I'm not getting any points. <laughs> we always start off calling the new big thing AI, and then we get a look at the man behind the curtain, see how the magic trick is done, and then it's not AI anymore. <laughs> uh, it's just the trick. Yeah. It's just the trick. And one day we'll go, hmm, it's not a trick anymore. Okay, there you go. We have 11 balls left. <laughs> okay, A to start. Oh practice goodness. mode. I think it is practice mode. Oh Tanya's not practicing very it's well. It's not very fast. There. No, it's joystick speed. Oh, it's so slow. <laughs> I don't know. I was able to bounce it off the wall a billion times. You can too. Pfft. Anticipate. Just, Anticipate. I try to. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay if it bounces backwards, but I can't get to it fast enough. 
It, it moves at the speed of the joystick. Yes, that is an issue. That's what. Ugh. Game over. Nice. Nice seventies nice font. font. Yeah, I was just thinking that too. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna switch the controllers because I think it only listens to port one. There you go. Option to start. Try and move it. Option, then move it. Hey. No. You're in trouble. It's not moving. Let's see if this is. My goodness. Well, this isn't plugged in. No, but like, it's what just you, not don't working. Don't scratch. It's not working. Stop I'm scratching not scratching. It. I'm pressing the A button and it's not working. Your ring's scratching it. It's not scratching it. Some mysterious noise is happening over there every time <laughs> your ring working. is hitting it, though. Yeah, my um, ring is scratching it. But... I did get this moving. With the with the rotary controller, yes. maybe try. Try port two again. Hmm. Okay. Try is option. There not... No, there's no option. Nothing. Mm. It doesn't work. It's only working out of uh, port one. How did I get this working? Maybe uh, you have to boot it with the rotor rotary controller. Oh on the yes, port? yes, yes, yes. So let's make sure this is in port one. Which is it? Oh, they're tangled up. Can't tell. No, not anymore. It's in port two because only port oh, one okay. works. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> teleprompter. Stan, you hit the controller when James isn't looking. Oh Smack. my God! Throw it across the room. Please don't. Uh, let the cats play with the cords. <laughs> no, bad kitties. Uh, cats were so excited through the era of corded controllers. It's just not the same. <laughs> it's not the same where you have wireless. That's right. So much less to play with. Eh? Hey? Yeah, you love the cords. <laughs> yes. Yes, you do. Hi. Ah, it's not working. No, it's not. Was It was working before? Well, but then you said it also crashed. Yeah. I wondered if there's anything that's effectively the opposite of catnip to put on things. Oh, there is. Tin foil. Some cats, like if they scratch things, if you put tin foil on them, they hate it. Uh, they hate the, the, the texture and the feeling. And the noise. Some cats aren't bothered by it. Um, the other downside to that is you have to put tin foil on your, on your fabric and on your. Um, and it looks terrible. Yeah. Or so. things that are sticky. They hate sticky. They don't like sticky. Too. You can put double sided okay. tape on on sofas and sometimes that'll that also deter looks them. terrible. Yeah. Okay, I can't get it working, but supposedly that has rotary controllers. And it was working. <laughs> it was, was working. working. Just trust him. <laughs> it was. I swear it was working. Maybe Cat James was on catnip when he had the rotary controller working. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Uh, I think it was on catnip. Um, yes, Gamma Dev. I also got excited when I got to get up and change the channel using the controller. I also got very good at lying on the floor and using my foot to turn the channel, <laughs> to turn the knob on the old TV we Funny. had when I was really young. So we'd put a pillow right like a foot from the TV. The TV was up on like a, a cabinet. And I would just sit there and change the channel with my foot all day. So this last one is Kaboom from 2016 by OMF, um, and it does say put rotary controller in port one. I will switch those out. Hi, hi, hi! You are so silly. You are so silly. Okay. There we go. Um, on October 13th, 2015, press button. Uh, OMAF posted, okay, I've been working on this for a month or so, powered by a Raptor engine. Um, in the evenings, night after work, and I think it's coming along nicely now. And the most current version I have tried to include the most features from the original Atari 2600 game. Eight levels, eight speeds, um, eight different points amounts for collecting the bombs in the bucket. So you can change the bucket type. Oh, it's not going up and down. 
Did I break it? Should it go be going up and down? Um, not necessarily. Okay, because of the rotary. Just press exit. Go up and down here. So boomy. Yes. Well, that's fine then. Okay. Just the it's option menu. Just that menu. screen. It's very sensitive though. Oh my goodness. <laughs> achievement unlocked. You press start. Collected bomb. Achievement unlocked. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Best achievements are the ones you can do. With achievement them. unlocked. Complete level one. Such so silly. Love I it. Love it. There's, oh, there's sound in this. Okay, you just can't. Splash, splash. Well, the splashing is pretty cool. Because that's what the original ones, uh, you were diffusing the bombs in water. Yeah, I didn't realize, but it didn't have splashing, the original. Uh, no, because it was a 26 inch game. <laughs> Not much room for splashing. I find this game stressful. <laughs> This one gets really crazy, but it's very, it's a little different. Oh, oh this one. God. Oh, no. You, achievement unlock, though. <sighs> sure. A and C work up and down for the menus. I think they do a little bit. And there's top and bottom as well. Uh, this version does not follow the same bomb dropping as the Tar 2600. I decided to spice it up a little and use some oh, degrees gosh. of randomness. Uh, based on the X position of the bomber and the X position of the player for the seed. Oh. I like the splashing. You're on level three. This is where I died last time. Ah! So fast. Uh, things to do. Uh, new life every thousand points. Change bomber's face to smile at 10,000, which we will not see. No, we <laughs> will not. Complete level four. My eyes get dry from playing this too. Because <laughs> you can't blink. <laughs> you can't blink. Uh, added ro add rotary support, which is in this now. Add title, option, game over screens, which they've done. Um, and December 1st, 2015, they nice. added rotary support. Game nice. over. Nice. I end like screen. it. I like it. It is a very cool port. It, it is. It really liked amped up the 2600 version quite a bit. Oh, A and C work for up and down the menus. Okay, good to know. Oh, this was Activision who always added the graphic and audio flair. The original did have splashing? Oh, ah. maybe I just didn't notice it. I, I, I just don't think it was as prominent, but yeah. Yeah. It's not a good background wall for... No um, yeah, the black against the gray is is a little hard to see it, it's a little yeah the modeling of it is is uh i would or you'd want the bombs to almost be pink or red or something completely yeah. or, but the, or yeah, the or the you can still see or the them. wall a little bit lighter me no because they'd be the color of the bombs well there's white light and dark in the bombs yeah. unfortunately you make the bombs completely black and then They're completely dark yeah and the wall yeah. lighter or the bombs lighter well, the wall who darker. was a port of Avalanche? That's right. And then John Shampoo made Avalanche. Yeah. Just such a hard game. It's so hard. I get my ass kicked on Avalanche. Because as you progress up the level, you lose uh, the size of your bucket. Oh my god. Just barely got that one. Yeah, that definitely makes it more challenging. Five. <laughs> They're so fast, you can barely see them. Yeah. Oh. Does it slow down again? Uh, a little bit. Touch, it, it goes in, back a level, I think. Yeah, because in Kaboom it does slow down a little bit. You're back to level four. It, it slows says... down a lot in Kaboom. How do you make it to 10,000 in this game? Oh my God. You have to get up to a very high level, because... Right fizzing fuses, perhaps, yeah. 624. I want to make it to 1,000, at least. 1,000? Because that's when you get an extra life. Who made that awesome menu option? Um, last episode we played. Well, we were using a paddle. 
Oh, it was, um... Damn, I lost it now. Where we're using a... Pa oh, it was, uh, it was turbo. And the options were like you spin the controller and it was left or right and you press the button to confirm that you're going down in the options and up in the options. It was really, really clever. First time I've seen that um, in a rotary controller options. So fast, eh? So good on Jam John Champeau for figuring that out. It's so good. So close. Yeah, inspired would be more accurate. Less of a port than say demon attack. Yeah, it's it's quite a different game. The concepts the same ish between Avalanche and Kaboom, but so many things have been changed that it's it's almost a different game. Oh, like the only thing that's the same is you're catching things that are falling. Oh god, I was dead. Because in the original game of Avalanche. There's, it's like almost breakout, and you can see the pieces falling off the top. But in Kaboom, they're one at a time, and they can come down from anywhere, wherever the, the guy's dropping them. Five, Five is the killer. Killer, yeah. Yeah, it's really hard. Oh, 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 my eyes. Mm, okay. Okay, let's get a thousand here. A thousand, you can do it. You can do it. Yes, you can. Oh, can it be all at this speed? Oh, so slow when you start over. You're like, ha ha, this is so nice. <laughs> Nutella level. Nutella level. Teddy bear level. Oh. I do think the Luckily, water the... splashing sound it's is very nice. soothing. Yeah, it's it's the same sound every time, but it's such a good sound that it doesn't matter that it's the same sound the every sound time. The sound of water is supposed to reduce anxiety, so mm. maybe it, it's helpful in this game because it gets very <laughs> it tense. Certainly as you doesn't go do it. It does not doing enough work. It's not doing enough work, eh? <laughs> to counter counterbalance this crazy game. Much more soothing. Than that. No, 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 no. That's too early. Kiki PDPH says, good morning. Hey, it's good morning. It's morning in Europe now. Well, thank you for joining us. Yes, and I hope you. you're having a, a lovely morning. It'll be a day later than here, too, I believe. Oh, yeah. It's Wednesday. <laughs> Is it? Wednesday. Oh, you actually, you actually go back a level. Like, it literally goes back a level. Yeah, it does. And then you're not getting as many points. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. It's hard to get to a thousand if you die in level But it, five. you get the extra life. Remember, there there was a strategy in this game that you it's not the you same die. On this one. Well, I don't know about this one, but you die just before a thousand. Oh yes. Because you get an extra life, so you might as well die. have an extra life and make it a little easier. I don't know. Oh yeah. I mean, definitely dead. Get level five turtles. Which is one paddle. Three. Have a good night, Carl G. Good night, Carl G. You're very, very welcome. That was an important thing to do. I don't know what that 152 is. What is that 152 up there? You see it? It was a different number before. I don't know what the 152 is. It wasn't. It was 152. It was 152. Three before. Mm, I thought it was 152 for me, too, but I wasn't mm. paying that close attention to it. James's score was 623. Was it? Yeah. Okay. It, I swear it got better on the other game. Mm, I don't know. We got five something, I thought. But on one of them. Got up to five. On yeah. Level five, but then it died in rapid succession. So. Oh! Nice oh. on it. Uh, I just want to die. <laughs> it's very quick. Cool Rage reset. Oh, yeah. It's. Rage reset. Faster. <laughs> 152. Hmm. Yeah, it's always 152 then. 
what is that, like a seed for the start of the game? But it hasn't changed. Mm, yeah. What? What kitten? He says, I only got one set of treats today. Yeah, but you got, you got some catnip too. I don't think, no, he's gotten a higher score than 152, so it can't be the high score. No, it could no. be a build version number or something. Oh, it could be. That's yeah. a good way to put it, right on the screen. So you know which uh, version you're playing. I'm just thinking of build versions. I was thinking of the, our friend who has um, a game coming out on the Nintendo Switch. Yes. Called Fay Farm, I think. Fay, yeah, I think. Fay Farm, and they, I've noticed they've been they've been advertising it more um, on the Switch page too. So, you, did you ever have Corey on the show? No, Once? I actually no? talked to him the other day, and I'm like, I haven't had you on the show. Yeah, Corey should come on the show. Yeah, he said he wanted to, but um, he's busy. He's busy making. Very his game. busy. <laughs> making his game. Making okay. games and level other six. Stuff. Okay, here we go. How fast is level six going to be? That's how fast. hard. That's how hard level six is. Right, beat your high score. Your last score. Six eighty-seven. I don't think I can get to a thousand. Because I just went to six, di died, went back to five, but it was a really short five. It, they are short. I think I don't think they're the normal length. Six is so freaking hard though. <gasps> I'm getting more score though. Because I'm level six. Every yeah. level the the score. And then it goes up. Oh, 781, so close. So uh, close. Game takes no time to build up difficulty. Yeah, yeah. same with same with oh, Kaboom. Giving it back to me. I'm 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 I'm. I'm All right, I'm gonna play one more because I just I just like the look of it. I'm not gonna. No way, I'm gonna hit 700. I can't get past level five, really. In the options, you can change the bucket look. Oh, we should have looked at that. Yeah, we'll look at it after this. I'll play one more. We'll look at it and then do one more. So do you start in the middle? Like, do you make sure your hand is in a certain position when you start the game? I should. <laughs> no, but, like, you, that's what I've been trying really to do. You really should, because you have to be able to move right from all the way to the left to the right without repositioning your hand. Yeah, because that's what I've been trying to do is... You not don't... overturn because then you get really tripped up yeah because you can overturn so in that essence you can correct on the fly if you oh want to goodness. when you're slammed against one side if i was a professional like gamer and i played kaboom i would need someone to put like drops in my eyes while i'm doing it <laughs> um you need to pay someone pay an yeah. intern yeah trip, with my trip. with my visine on the side <laughs> Visine on call. Visine on call. Oh, man. The points for a bomb seems to be the level number. Okay, that makes that makes it easy to figure out the scores. Nice. Oh, my eyes hurt now. Oh. You're always at the same score oh. at the same at, at the end of the level too. Yeah. So hit to good. level six and did very well on level six. Oh gosh, I find level five hard. Why can't I move to the middle? That's weird. The other ones let me move it. Oh my goodness, you got that one. I thought so too. I think you beat my score. I don't know. At the end, you will. Oh, I only have one life. You won't let me re, re um, not till you start. I yeah, don't think that ever yeah, maybe. happened. Maybe I thought I was able to, but maybe that's not the case. Maybe that was just the very start of the game. Yeah. 833. <sighs> oh, 893. So close. That was good. I had a good run right at the beginning. Double Down says, he's only good at Kaboom on a CRT. Too much lag on LCDs, even good ones in game mode. Ah. Really? I don't, like I'm Tank using a, a retro tank. There's yeah. so little lag. And this is in game mode. There's like I have not perceived any lag, but this game is the one where people would, because mm. you have to be so. That was a good one. The first few levels, I I, I struggled. Oh. 
That's the problem. No, A and C. Someone said A and C are up and down. No? Uh, I've just pressed all A, B, and C. There? A and C? I've done it all, and oh. it just exits. Okay. I don't think you can on this. With the rotary? For some reason. That's okay. But you can. Oh. Uh, no. If I plug this in. Well, Maybe? We, sh we should. It is plugged in. Oh, flip it around, I mean. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do it. Bucket type. Two bucket types. Bomb type. Oh, bucket size. Oh, it's a sausage. <laughs> what? Uh, no. The other ones I don't think you can change. The speed and the bomber speed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Change the bucket type doesn't change that much. Oh. Oh, my God. Starts right away. Yeah, I didn't see anything like this because it did. Oh, I see. Just have to wait. Are sure that wasn't a banana? <laughs> it's all about the bananas. It was a sausage. Banana for scale. Go to the giant to get a thousand. Uh, I might have to. Yeah. I think we can make a thousand, but you need a good run right at the beginning. Why isn't this working now? Oh, do you have to reboot it? in port 2 or something? No. No. I don't think it was in port 2. It's now confused. No. Oh. You didn't like that. Maybe you can't. <laughs> I would change that. It doesn't like you flipping them. No. Doesn't doesn't recognize you have a rotary controller maybe? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe you need to boot it with this. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you, I didn't. Awesome. Yes, Tanya did an awesome job in the last. You had a good run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> explosions in this one. Let's see. Yeah, now it's working. Oh, the achievements are on the screen. A little distracting when they come up. Yeah, luckily they only do that the first game. Unless you have an achievement of getting a, a new life and you're in the middle of super intense level. Yeah, that wouldn't be very nice. No, it would be very really nice. It's going to happen. When you hit a thousand, achievement unlocked. Get like, ah, get life. out of the, get off the screen. It's part of the challenge. Play through the achievements. <laughs> yeah. Level five at least. So over the top. I love it. So over I the top. I love it. It's great. continue to move last time it was struggling it wouldn't let me move that's very strange um i wonder if that's a bug when you lose a few of the buckets oh because oh. i don't think i had my full buckets but I, I was like i swear i could readjust it and move it back reset it to the center we'll find out i guess yeah. Yeah, there's a bucket. It's like sometimes i'm like am i crazy did this happen and then usually i'm like no it did <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. I'm not crazy. I was able to turn to move that around in between levels. Or maybe it's just when you die. Mm. Yay. Yay! Oh my god. I can move it. Mm -hmm. oh, God, that one. No, it's good. You made it to 
to six. Oh! <laughs> what are you doing? It's level five, you can go to one paddle. No, you hit a six, and then you drop down to five. Yeah. You, but, but it was still very fast on five. Oh, okay. You just hit the button really fast. I thought you were giving up. Oh, no, 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 no. No, it wasn't. I was just like, keep going. I was doing okay. I the lost ones. It's way too early. That's the problem. First one I should lose is on level six. Yeah. Cat fire? Sounds like something. Is that my game? No, I'm worried. No. Cats, where are you? No, oh, somebody's running. Kudums! Get out of the way! <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry. It's doing really well! Why would you do that? <laughs> Sorry. It's on level Sorry. five! I didn't realize you were on <gasps> level five. Keep going. No. No. No, I have to make it a level six with five, five, four pockets. Yes, yes, all the games I'm playing are downloadable. Um, so you can find them. Yeah, it's trying to find where the rushy water is coming in. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Spoosh, 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 spoosh. It's in the game. I heard it. There. Or it's outside. I thought it was outside. I still think it's the black cat doing something. I think, I think it it's is like too. like climbing on the balcony and escaping or Are something. Are they open? Is the balcony open? Uh, but just a squish, but if he managed... There it is again. It's the start of the game. I think it's the start of the level. No. Is it the game? I don't know. No. Can you guys no, hear that out there? No, because it sounds like it's from outside. Or a squeak. It okay. is outside. It is. It's, it's like a squeak. Squeaky mechanical noise. Yeah. Like a swing or something. Squeaky swing. But it's almost cat like noise. No. Sounds a bit like our black cat. Maybe. A little <laughs> bit. Like he's in trouble. Maybe. The infamous sky trumpets. <laughs> oh, I'm s I suck at this game. down to level four. It's so hard to run. I know. Three really Very cool. Helps. Excellent. I'm good. Yep, Eight, I'm nine good three. Too. That was a good run. This? That was a good run. That he can't say that very often, so Nope. Certain games. Oh, it's so annoying to get all tied up. Certain games she's very good at. Well, depends on the game. Uh, I would kick your ass at uh, impossible mission. <laughs> Uh, yes. Well, one of the few games I can likely. play well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's it for the JAG uh, controller games that I was able to find out of. Uh, I reached out to Cyrano J. I went through the um, uh, forums to look for any paddle controlled games, rotary controller games. So mm. we've exhausted them all on the Jaguar. Now we've played them all. Very cool. So there's a where. There's what about would 12. you go back to of the games we played? I'm trying to remember the ones. Oh, Arkanoid. Tempest was really good. Arkanoid two because I just know I'm better than what we played. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me look at the first list. The first I list. Li um, yeah, the Tempest one was really good, if I recall. Um, yes. Oh yeah, you have to play. It was an excellent game. You have to play with Tempest. Um. Tempest with the uh, controllers. Kaboom is good, but Kaboom's Kaboom. Like yeah, I'm just not good at it. So yeah, uh, it's it's fun, but it gets super hard super quick, which else? makes me go ah help. Uh, Jaguar rotor controllers. Oh, not coming soon. There we 
go. Let's put this up on the screen. There we go. Uh, Tempest 2000, uh, Downfall OG Plus, which uh, was not, I, I think I like joystick better on that. Uh, Rebooteroids was very good with the rotary, so that was Asteroids. Oh, yes. So you can spin and that immediately good. aim. That really was good. good. Yeah, that was really uh, good. Kobayashi Maru, which I totally forget what that is. I don't know why, but the name doesn't... I need a picture. ...associate well with the game. So sometimes the games are like that. I need a picture. Uh... Oh, there's no picture. Oh, there's more pages. It's not loading. Just nobody's put a picture of it. <laughs> Come on. Oh, is this it? No. What was it? Thanks, Tailstone email. Thanks so much. Like that? Oh, oh, it's it's uh, Time Pilot. No, that was good. That was really good on uh, the good. rotary controller. Yeah. Um, Koyashi Maru. What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> um, and tonight, Arkanoid 2 was great on it. Uh, yes. Kaboom was great on it, yeah. of course. That's what it's made for. Yep. Um, uh, Warlords, well, we only had one, so we couldn't play multiplayer. Yeah. Because on that game, I didn't say it when we were playing it, but you either play all controllers or all rotary. Oh, so you can't, you can't have do a mix. A mix. That's okay, why we didn't that play be... together. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a Star Trek reference. Yeah. Um, but I just couldn't remember what it was associated with the game. Yeah. Um, Pong would be fine. We couldn't get it going. Yeah. I swear I played it with it. <laughs> um, so and uh, Impulse X we didn't play, but it's breakout uh, type game. Yeah. Which would be awesome again. Yep. Uh, with the rotary controller, so I would say almost all of them were suited very well. For the rotary. For the Absolutely. rotary controller. Yep. 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 So next episode, we're going to go out with a bang before our summer break. Uh, we have an exclusive update for RT, Muddy Funster's RT game. Mm -hmm. And also the final digital release of EXO. I don't yes. know. Can Sprite has treats? We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if he can has treats. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Well, I'd have to click it, <laughs> and then I would be giving him treats. Nah. Uh, somebody else would have to do time. that. Uh, next time. Next time. Um, it's already fairly late. Uh, not too bad. Yeah. Um, and uh, those would definitely occupy our time. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, those are two good games, and EXO. long games. EXO is very long, yep. and Artie as well. So that'll be a lot of fun playing two of... Muddy Funster's game. Yes. I'm guessing he's going to be in the chat Hopefully. because yeah. it's an early day and Erlen's going to be there. Excellent. Then we go on break. <clears throat> I have a plan for about two weeks. I'm mm. um, going to be working on Atari 2600 programming, mm -hmm. jazzing up the stream a little bit, mm -hmm. adding some more fun things into the stream, doing a little bit of graphic work and stuff. Um, update on the awards which i'm very sorry they've taken this long it's all her fault it is all my fault no, no. she's making them really awesome <laughs> well i am making them awesome i've done my first round there are a few i need to redo but i think i'm going to finish the ones i have yep. you can ship those out and then yep. i think there's a handful that i'm just going to re-pour and then those will come a little later but they're very 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 close to getting in your yes. hands well Probably once within, it's shipped but week? i think some of them yeah Probably not. The last few that just haven't met my quality control <laughs> need to be reported. <laughs> yeah. They're not terrible, no, but no, no. Uh, in fact, I even have them if people want the failed ones. Um, but, um, mm. well, it's up yeah. to them. Uh, but uh, Smash them up. <laughs> um, but yeah, so <clears throat> they should, the first round should be shipped soon, I think, relatively I'd soon. I'd like to get a photo of all of them at once so, so I'll, what put, I, I'll put the failed ones and the good ones together and put the failed ones in the back you could do that yeah. um also I, i'm gonna probably tonight start pouring the some of the new ones okay good um i'll need two rounds to do those um well yeah if you yeah we'll see we'll see some of them might ship um, together so some might ship together so they might have to wait factory seconds over yeah what, soon, soon on ebay, eBay. yeah That's exactly right. <laughs> cheap cheap half price yeah well uh, they're free so yeah, yeah. um yeah uh, but they look yeah. really really awesome so i'll post a photo Got of a the awards very soon yes 
on the uh, on the forums a, a and lot all of the them. it looks really good and yeah. all the uh, social media. Yep. And uh, we'll be playing some After Dark here and there on our break because we have some things yes. to catch up on yep. and some scores to achieve. Yes. It'll be at random times, probably completely unannounced. Yep because um, we're on our break but uh, then we'll be back and we'll yep. be playing some more games it's gonna be fun because right now there's about five games a week i'm adding to the list yeah so it's not as much as it is during the, the oh during God. the winter right you get tons during the winter it's like 10 a day yeah it's insane yeah like i go through them like literally it's one maybe a day yeah maybe we should try and fit in a marathon sometime this summer. I, Not a marathon, sorry, a, a marathon. multiplayer day. Well, that's definitely in the plan. Not a marathon, but like that well, it lasts be, a little while. It'll but, be a long show. Yeah, but that's always fun. Yep, because yep. there's uh, the Quad Tari for the 2600 yes. and 7800. Yes. There is the Team Tap, what was it called? Team Tap for the Jaguar. Mm-hmm. And for the 5200, it has four ports built in. Awesome. So we're going to be playing those. Uh, I'll be researching all the games that are fun for those systems that have four players. Mm -hmm. Like literally not less than four players. Because we can play two player anytime. And there's not many three player games. <laughs> so all four players, it's going to be a four player day game. A four player game day. Yeah. With Darcy, Erlen, and yourself. And it'll be on a Friday. So Darcy can come over. That would be awesome. Yep. It'd be a lot of fun. Yep. It'd be a long... Uh, they're working on a multiplayer on the Atari 8-bit with FujiNet. Uh, I know they have... I saw posts about a... Uh, a card... Uh, the card game, Blackjack. But that was over the internet. Mm. I think. Not a local, because it's obviously it's FujiNet. Vroom is eight players, yes. But that does count. Because it is four plus players. Um, and we might even throw some classic games in there because Mule. Oh, of course, yes. It's a four-player game there you as go. well. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. Mule. Darcy and I used to play Mule in, there. Yeah. in the 80s. In the 80s. Together. Nice. As little, little kids. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm picturing that. I bet it was very cute. So. <laughs> no, we're just geeky teenagers. You're probably teenagers. Yeah, I was going to say. He might Acne have been that Acne riddled young. geeky teenagers <laughs> yeah. playing on our Commodore 64s. <laughs> nice. Yes, not as cute as you made. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so that's in the plans nice. um so it's the last time you'll see tanya for a little bit oh i'll be in the after yeah yes. yeah it'll all be good we'll get get us playing a few games get yep. the kitties on the camera it'll all be good that's right maybe all we'll right. eventually digitize the uh the dingers oh because darcy thought because both pieces are metal yeah the the dinger part yeah and the bell part they make a physical connection yes they do and can complete a circuit oh uh, okay yeah that's and true and you feed that to anything like a raspberry pi or arduino whatever yep yeah. yeah. and anytime it just completes a circuit just it can send it to the computer or it sends it to the computer and automatically yeah so even if they do a light touch as long as it actually hits See, but it has to make the noise. That's always been the... Yeah. They're supposed to associate the noise but with getting the treat. Darcy theorized make the computer make the noise. As long as it's immediate. <laughs> it's different. Yeah, yeah. We'll You'd have see. to put a debounce for Sprite. Yeah. That's true. Boing, oh, that's... boing, boing, boing. Oh, I just thought of an issue. There would Not a debounce, but there'd have to be a, a timeout of at least 10 seconds because he goes ding 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 yeah. a cool down yes yeah. that's what it is a cool down cool period down. yeah yeah because he'd hit it like 20 times in a row and he'd be like and win sprite one <laughs> double pine ding 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 yeah that oh, would be funny. a problem but i doubt i'll ever do that because yeah. the, the the physical thing is, i think it's cuter fun. that it's a physical thing they do yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah now saying that if it could be made into a 2600 game yeah, they're, they're, they're that's a whole different yeah. thing you hook it up to a joystick port port one port two each cat gets its own joystick oh you have cat goodness. representations and bells on the screen oh my goodness now that i'll do that's even easier because it's already built Can in one button like you just modify a joystick and instead of going to the button, it goes Can't up to the bell. Can't you just use the track and field and try to get them to hit each of the buttons? Oh, double down can make a custom controller. It. <laughs> it of would, course. It yeah. would have to be as as 
as light as this. Yeah. Spring. Oh, look at what, what did you do? What did you do? I'm just going to give them some treats. Okay. <laughs> So um, yeah, it would have to be very light. That would be amazing double down. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you're so funny, you guys. Just a, si a simple controller, two buttons. Yeah. Boing, boing, boing. Easy leaf switch buttons. So those are the light ones. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they'd have to look like... Did you eat those already? <laughs> he inhales Holy them. Holy smokes. Um, it would have to kind of look like bells almost. I don't know, you'd have to incorporate the bell into it somehow, yeah. maybe. Yeah, bratwursts are quite light. Yeah, that's true. Let's see. Yeah, and these... they spring back well. Yeah, bratwursts are pr pretty good buttons on those. I'm not sure what... Yeah, those are pretty light buttons. So. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, getting way off track. Uh, I don't know if anything is on track. Thank you for tuning in, Vitsoko, Double Down, Gamma Dev, Chitlet La, Chow Stony Mao, Danny VC, Metal Lunar, um, Carl G, Ivory Tower Collections, uh, Kiki PDPH, um, Teleprompter, Cafe Man 2D, Huge Ass, Dios Kilos, Beer Pocock. Dan on ABC. ABC. And everybody else Yay. who was in here or lurking, all of you. And thank you, of course, as well to the devs um, whose messages I read out at the top of the show. Uh, if you missed those, definitely yes. rewind and take a listen to those. Yep. Very interesting. I'll be posting them on social media, etc., etc. Um, and we'll be back on Friday yes. with Erilyn with uh, the last show before the summer break. So mm -hmm. thank you everybody for tuning in and uh, we will see you on Friday with some exclusive games. Bye-bye everybody. Bye-bye. Bonne nuit.